Yo, what's going on, UBA? This is Sean Knight Faison, a.k.a. The Voice of Choice here. And we are now having our second dose of caffeine for the day. We're here, Westbrook Lanes, out here deep in the south, south New Jersey. And we have former Vixens champion, Tata Todd herself, Kelsey Hammonds. How are you feeling today? Feeling really good. Ready to bowl. Ready to bowl? I'm very ready. I've bowled enough today, but we're going to keep going because I, I, I'm ready for this. There you go. You, know, you already know how it is. When tater tots are hot and ready, you got to get it going. <laughs> All right. And over here, we have the debuting on, on camera because we got a chance yeah. to hear her bless us with her commentary over that amazing performance with Segura Wheeler against Hermie Hannibal. Yeah. And we got a chance to hear um, the vocals of Miss, Mrs. Hood, Sarah Hood. How are you, Sarah Hood? Messenger Mafia, right? Yeah. Yep, Messenger Mafia. Sounds very familiar. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, a certain peppery gentleman may you know may know something about that team too. So, how are you feeling? Your first contest against former champion. How you feel today? I know if you feel like anything like I heard you felt today, then. <laughs> yeah, we had a good win today. So um, yeah, I'm hoping I can keep the momentum going, and uh, I'm I'm really excited to to build this match. Yeah. We're definitely excited to see it. Looking forward to some good action right now. Second dose of caffeine. Thanks for joining us. You can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. Best of seven. Let's see how it goes. All right. Best of luck, ladies. Good evening, everyone in UBA land and Caffeine TV land, and even if you're not in the land, by the sea, by the air, outer space, I don't know. This is Gordon Pepper. Alongside me is one Mr. Shandate Faison. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Yes, yes. The message is loud and clear, and the messenger mafia is here. And That's I heard they were here also during their tour stop. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about the match first. We have Tater Tot, a.k.a. Kelsey Hammond, the former Northeast Vixens champion. I believe this is her first match since losing the title to Hermie Hannibal. Indeed, indeed. And uh, basically, Sarah Hood, last time we were here, because we covered the Vixens match, Sarah Hood was the co-commentator, and I said, if there's a good chance you're going to be bowling an ex-Vixens champion, and sure enough, she's bullying an ex-Vixens champion. So she was commentating. This is now her first step as a bowler in the Vixens round, and this is gonna be a treat. Yes, indeed, very intriguing. Uh, we've seen Kelsey before, we know what she can do. You know, like I said, when Tater Tot's hot, it's hard for her to stop, but she's going against, well, someone that she has not had the opportunity to see, AKA, hashtag re-rate, as you see on the back of her jersey. Sarah well, Hood. I've, I've had the opportunity to see her many a time because, disclaimer, she is on my team. That's so right. I am a member of the Messenger Mafia, so is Sarah Hood. Sarah Hood, by the way, earlier in tour stop shot a 761 series. And I think it was because of throwing shots like that. But because of throwing shots like that, yes. And that's the reason why she's called Rerate, because mm. a lot of people think she's a lot better than the average that she's coming in with. Right now in UBA tour stop, she's averaging, I believe, after this tour stop, she's averaging a 233. Yes. 230 mm. plus. Wow. And so she's good. That's right. Merrily, merrily down the stream. Well, well, at least this stream will keep going. Well, she, she's looking to continue. <laughs> and it will the, not get lost. Well, she, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Speaking of streamings, we are here again. Thank you, Caffeine TV, for having us. And Sarah's looking to make it two in a row early and get a quick lead. No, three, six, ten. Ooh, six. So looking oh, for ten. I'm sorry. There is, there's a nine pin behind that three. Three, is. six, nine, ten. That's right. And in Halloween fashion, hiding. You know, spookily behind the three pin is the and nine pin. Masking, by the way, happy Halloween to those of you who celebrate it. Oh, very good. And right now we're trying to see if she can have a mask effect on this player, on the spear and not, not chop anything. You're going to Halloween dress as a pun master, aren't you? Well, I'm thinking more like Chris Rios, you know, mm -hmm. big pun, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. your, your, your methodology of punmanship, very nice. Mm, exactly, you know. Yeah. Yes. Now let's see what Sarah Hood's methodology of spare shooting is. There's that ball that's Ooh, coming that's out. Gotta hurry. Like, uh oh. Ooh. Tapping from the back on a Saturday night. That's why we make walls. Ooh. Ooh. By the way, Carl, buckle your boo. 
That, that's fair, Henny. Ghost of a chance. Oh, very good. Uh, that's, hence and, the booing. And hopefully her chances not, will not become phantom. As she, well, has, yes. has a chance to go 280, provided that she goes sheet, as we say. Yes, which would also be part of a ghost. Mm. You're wearing a sheet. Kelsey right now looking to get her first strike on the match and doesn't do it. Yeah, that ball was um, running and running and running, but it never actually made a turn. Running with the night. Keep on running mm -hmm. in the shadows. And running, 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 running. Oh. And she needs to get it started in here. Actually, if you know the song that I'm talking about, you're old like I am. <laughs> hashtag. Hashtag show your with age. my birth birthday last Wednesday. Hashtag. Oh, oh, happy birthday to you. Happy thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And two candlesticks up there. Let's see if she can blow them out. And no. She does not. Leaves the five pin. Sarah Hood takes an early lead yeah. as we go into the third frame. Yeah, quite For a those bad of, deal. Yeah, got a bad break there. For those of you joining us, we just started game one in the Vixens matchup. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Hammond, former Northeast Vixens champion, taking on Sarah Hood in her debut match. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, I think this is going to be fun. You have Westbrook that is known for sometimes being very spotty. Mm. So this could very well be a grinding matchup that you're going to see. Oh, I yes. think if somebody finds, obvi obviously, clearly in bowling, if somebody can find the carry and can string it along, then they're going to have a huge advantage. But even more so over at Westbrook, because finding it is not very easy, and they Ooh, all went down. Oh, yes, yes. Almost had a Richard Nixon situation, almost had the big four. But nope. She was a crook that time, and she stole that strike. She did steal the strike, but it looks really good up there. Kelsey Hammond from the Usual Suspects. Mm -hmm. uh, also no stranger to winning Usual Suspects, a perennial playoff team. Mm -hmm. And I believe, from what Kelsey was telling me earlier. And Kelsey, uh, Usual Suspects, by the way. Ooh, oh. that's not the double that Sarah was looking for. Well, this is the second sighting of UBA OGs today. Earlier we had indeed a classic walk down and now we get someone who wants Sully to shoot Cam. lights out believes a Josh Malik. Oh, the Malik is out there in full force. A-10 is there. In most things we take a little time out, get a little selfie shot, mm -hmm. put it on with social media and away we go. However, well, we'll Sarah a screenshot. Does, yeah, or a little screenshots. Sarah wants no part of that and Ooh. she's not going to get one. It, no. Yeah, you know, a little bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. Thought Dang. that she would be able to take a lead. She does not. Now she she is in danger of falling mm -hmm. out by 11 as we go into the fourth frame. Mm -hmm. So now if I can make mention that something that happened very similar um, during the Leah Maynard and Matthew uh, Gerdhart match. Mm -hmm. Going for certain spares, wood is good. And when you leave get things on the, the table, you get, always get the wood. It can come down and, and using another Halloween vernacular. If you miss the extra wood up there, it could come back to haunt you. Indeed. And that is a spooky situation. It can give you the hibby-jeebies if you keep making mistakes like that and giving away freebies. Yes. Yeah, so what's haunting everybody right now is the fact that you and I are going back and forth on the puns. Sarah Hood going back and forth on the strikes. No, 10-pin. Mm. Well, standing up for the rights on the right side. 10-pin right there. Standing tall, being uh, a leader, not a follower. 10-pins feel that they have their rights. Mm -hmm. So Kelsey Hammond right now looking to double in the fourth frame when we get there. Sarah's looking to make the spare. You don't want to compound an error with another one. And this one is a makeable spare. Indeed. So she definitely does not want to do on the second ball in frame four what she did on the second ball in frame three. Exactly. And go over the edge. Over the edge. I yeah. will not be singing. No one wants <laughs> that. You can sing happy birthday. That's fine. We're not singing. I'm going to try not to. Can't make me. Great balance. Uh, yeah, Handles that looks are good. Tempting, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Looked like she stayed in that one. Came off her hand a little earlier when she was attempting to get some wood off of that 8-10 lead. And one thing that I noticed during her commentary with the Hermie Hannibal and, and um, Segura Wheeler match, mm -hmm. very knowledgeable of her equipment, knowledgeable of surfaces. Uh, mechanically, you could already tell she knows what she's doing on there. She is an excellent tactician of the game. Mm. And again, Carl Buckley, who was with us on the last broadcast on the Vixen side, here again helping her out. She's going to be a very tough competitor. Kelsey throwing a double is also going to be a very tough competitor. Kelsey right now up by nine as we go into the fifth frame. Very good. And right there sending a real message, if you will, to Sarah Hood. And she's trying to take the situation. She sees that the oven is hot. And she's ready to start cooking some tots. Yeah, Sarah and, and Carl immediately starting to ch chat and have a little note-taking session. Mm -hmm. 
No. Kelsey has her fang club right there, including uh, one of her friends that now they're bowling together the usual suspects. Also, from a college standpoint, very much a tactician. Hammond right now, three in a row, trying to open up a lead here. Yeah, trying to erase the mistake and wash it away with a couple of, you know, nasty strikes. You know, when you when you leave something on the table, when you leave a frame open, you kind of want to tell yourself, hey, let me see if I could throw enough strikes to erase this, not only from up there, but out of your own mind. Because you never want one-on-one -on -one to become two-on-one. -on -one. That'd be you and yourself versus your opponent. Well, Kelsey right now has erased a quick deficit. She's now up by 21, and she'll be even more so if Sarah doesn't start striking on her own. Here's her right now, fifth frame. That ball looks good. Ooh, another 10 pin. Oh man, beautiful shot by Sarah right there. Definitely controlling the pocket very well. Her surface is getting through, not getting the carry that she's looking for. But right now, now if you remember third frame, now granted she was trying to make a spare on the 810, so she whipped on the 10 pin. I don't think she's gonna do that again. And she better not do that again or else she's gonna fall into a very deep hole that she may not be able to recover from on game one. Yeah, a deep hole reminiscent of a Dark Knight situation. And again, I will not be singing the Batman theme because no one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> no one. Well, aren't you the not Joker? Not even you. I'm trying. I'm trying to be real nice here. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully she doesn't freeze up. Uh, and... She will not, Mr. Freeze Up. She will make the spare. Oh, there you go. And right I saw now, what you did there. Uh, yeah, you saw what I did right now. I and saw every what single you did. shot, from what I could see, similar she... to Ivy, Kelsey's yeah. throwing us poison. However, Kelsey's looking for the pin Gwyn. As we say for game one, and you try got not that. to be a joker you, you here. You got it. You got it. Now everybody's going to be I'm going. I'm not robbing go, that. No, no. Everybody online is going to be going like, oh no, there's two of them. We have two faced right now. Mm -hmm. Two faced on on there, and I don't. I'm hoping that we don't owe Batman residual rights after this. I know, right? So Sarah, right now, going into the second half of game one, down by 12 at this point, looking to strike, will not another 10 pin. Now, if you notice with that shot, and like you mentioned before, a great tactician of a game, I'm watching her. She's moving a little more in with her feet. She knows that her ball has a great reaction. She's following the oil, and she's listening to her yes. ball. Some bowlers, yes. their ball talks, but they never listen. She is listening is to every shot. She is. Now, she's doing two things in essence. Number one, as you said, she's moving over. Number two, she's hopefully, I believe what she's trying to do, is hopefully splash the oil a little bit and trying to wreck Kelsey's line. Their lines are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Sarah's playing a little bit more inside than Kelsey is at this point. That obviously can change. But first things first, let's keep making spares and keep yourself in this. And that looks like she'll make it. Little white plastic ball. Does its job. Indeed, and does. It does. Sarah had three spares in a row. However, Kelsey Hammond three strikes in a row. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one here will increase her lead. Already up by 23. Maybe you're looking to make it 33, even possibly 43. And if that's the case, Sarah's running out of frames. Yes, indeed. She is definitely trying to run, hit the ground running right now, making up for that second frame debacle. And you mentioned their styles. Now, when you watch Kelsey set up, Kelsey's throwing it outside. She's looking outside in, looking for four in a row. Oh, yes. she gets it. Probably not the way she wanted it, but again, she doesn't care. During during that four-strike run, two of those shots were, shall we say, uh, ick. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Looks good up there. Hey, hey, ick, sick. Either way, it spells the X in the end. Yes. And, you know, contrast of styles. They say often, whether it's combat sports, that styles make fights. Sarah Hood. Almost a poetry in motion by watch, watching her release the well, ball. Well, Sarah's playing down and in. Uh, Kelsey went from outside to corner to corner now. Exactly. So now she moved her style. Let's see mm -hmm. what she does here on lane 41. Last time out, she buried the shot. That's where she did put it before. And this time, she, oh, she's out of trouble. I was about to say, this time she may pay for it. She does not. Six pin goes down, leads to 4-7. Yeah, very, very powerful. Um, moving from the right, attacking the pocket right there like a torpedo. Still very good at the bottom of the ball. You always watch her hand. Sarah likes to play a little, what I like to call wet to dry ratio, getting it, let it roll in the oil, let it react. Uh, we're going to see how that affects each of their games going against each other. So the string of strikes stops. The string of marks will continue. Yep. Excellent. So that's her seventh frame. Sarah's going to go into the seventh frame. Sarah's down by one through 31 pins. If she doubles, it can make it 21. She can make this a ball game here. If Sarah goes out the door, it is a 224. And if she does that, that means Kelsey's got to find a double somewhere along the way to shut her out. 
Indeed she does. She has to find a double somewhere right now. Kelsey has two doubles in a row back to back well, and Kelsey, working together. Well, Kelsey right, now, uh, Kelsey right now has got four in a row. Or, well, he's saying two doubles back to back, which would make it four. I see Carl's like, it's, it's four. Yeah, all yeah. I just did was connect the doubles. So. Shout out to everybody so. in Brooklyn who eats some doubles. Yes, <laughs> but believe, believe it or not, you know, he's a poor L'Oreal and he can math. Believe it or not, he doesn't math the same so, way that we math sometimes, but he does math. I, I'd be mathing. Yeah, you, you can math it. Right now, Sarah needs to have a letter, which is an X. Oh, and she gets a sloppy strike also. And isn't sloppy that strikes something? all over the place. The one you don't like gets you the strike. <laughs> there you go. Eighth frame coming up here. This is a crucial frame for Sarah. As we mentioned earlier, she's running out of frames. Kelsey has not had the best luck in the world, but she's gotten four in a row. Right now, that is the difference in this game. If Sarah strikes here, she cuts the deficit down to 20 and again forces Kelsey to start throwing strikes again. That deficit's going to be cut even further. Indeed. Sarah does have enough time to make a game out of this, but th this ball must be a strike. Yes, the, the differences in their styles are going to make an amazing treat for oh, us to watch did, on this second dose of caffeine. Did you see what Sarah did there? She shot that ball outside. Mm -hmm. That ball went in. She has not gone there during this game. She does now. Double for Sarah. Again, now Kelsey's still in good shape. She still, if she keeps it clean and throws a double somewhere, she will win this game. That being said, A, she has to keep it clean, and B, she's got to throw a double somewhere. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, two of those strikes, as I mentioned before, were not exactly of the convincing variety. Mm -hmm. And then that last shot that we that she saw was up the beak. She got away with one. It could have been a split, was not. Here we go, A frame. That ball looked good. Mm. That was a nice looking ball. Very good. She definitely pushed that down a little more. Didn't try to force it in. She basically yes. let her hands and her fingers do the work there. Yes, ninth frame coming up. This is a pivotal, pivotal frame for Kelsey. If she doubles, number one, Sarah can't shut her out. Number two, and more importantly, if Sarah goes out the door, Kelsey only needs a mark. That's all she needs to do. If she does not strike here, then she's got to work it out for in the 10th frame. If she opens, Sarah can steal game one. Here we go, big shot right here. Let's see the adjustment. Oh, oh. no, eight frame. Eight pin coming out. She thought she had it. She was walking off. Her fan club thought they had it. Mm -hmm. They were about to cheer. Eight pin said, uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that shot. Man, well, well, let's talk about the THC in that shot because that eight is stone. Um, she definitely attacked super hard. She made sure that she got into that pocket, got the right speed, stayed in it. Too much ball in that case. Well, she's not going to miss a spare. She does not. Very good. So right now, Kelsey with a 175, 195 in the ninth. Potential now 225 she is barely, finish. barely, barely holding on potential 195 in the ninth. And I say that because if Sarah goes out the door, it's a 224. Mm -hmm. Kelsey must go out the door if Sarah does for the 225. So now it's not just she's got to find a mark because she didn't double. Now she not only has to find a double, she may have to find all three. Mm. Ninth frame here, Sarah Hood again. Stage is set, but she's got to throw a strike here to have somewhat control of her destiny. And she does. That is a beautiful shot. Carl screams in approval, let's go. That's right. Tenth frame coming up, and now it is an 11-pin lead. And if Sarah throws a strike here, she's caught up. Yeah, she's definitely keeping it Hood. That'd be Sarah Hood. Now again, yeah, Hood's keeping it good. Now she cannot cut, she cannot shut Kelsey out. However, she can force Kelsey to throw all three in the 10th frame. Yes, put a little pressure. And right now it's a, it's a, a good, well, a grappling match right now. And they're both jockeying for position in the 10th frame. So. Very much so. First shot here, she gets a lot of pressure if he can throw the strike right here. And she does not, 10 pin. And it seems like the 10 pin is being uh, a momentary ally for Kelsey. But we all know the 10 pin has no friends. Tempin does not. Now, here is what Sarah needs to do. Obviously, she's got to make the spare. If she does not make the spare, the game's over. If she makes the spare and strikes, that puts up a difference of 18. That means Kelsey must mark in the 10th frame. A 9 open would be a tie. Anything less than a 9, Kelsey must make the spare. If she does not, Sarah will steal. Now, what Just like a trick-or-treat panda. Now, where would she be if she at least got one pin off of that 8-10? That is true. Get the wood, get the wood! To make make sure that's not academic, she's got to make the tempin she does. Now the other thing that I noticed, they're gonna have to re-rack 42. Just looking at that. That eight pins down. 
So that, How that ironic, means, the eight pin went down yeah, with the eight a full pin rack. pin went down in the wrong rack. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Kelsey's aware of it. Yeah, she, Kelsey wanted that eight pin to go down on lane 41. Instead, it's down on lane 42. Yeah, we were saying that you wanted the eight pin to go down on 41. <laughs> well, it's down on lane 42, not 41. Well, well, sometimes earthquakes have residual effects. Yeah, now, now Sarah would really love to see a strike right here, and she will. And did you notice that? So, you know, she did, tried out a little, a little different surface there. Maybe trying to get a little different look. Yep. Something a little duller, a little stronger to maybe fight through the oil as she moves inside. So here, here's the situation. Sarah Hood finishes out with the 203. Any mark from Kelsey, assuming she does not feed it to the gutter monster on the first ball, will give her game one. Any open, with the exception of nine open, Sarah takes game one. If Kelsey does go nine out, it is a tie. It is a two-frame roll off. Well, haven't you and I called uh, uh, some interesting roll-offs well, we in sure the past have. couple of matches? We, we sure have. This, this season, we've had a couple of interesting roll-offs. We've so had a far. lot of history being made we've on had, Caffeine TV. We, we have. Caffeine, this has been fun on Caffeine TV. Mm -hmm. and, and again, just a reminder, uh, Vixen's matches are fun. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Vixen's are pioneers. Oh. It's just like UBA are pioneers. Well, congratulations to Liam Maynard for holding on to the Cruiserweight title and remaining the sole female holder of the cruiserweight title. We've had Vixens win the welterweight. When are we gonna see one win the heavyweight title? Because I'm gonna reference, hello, Sagira Wheeler. I'm talking, I'm talking to you, Sagira. Yes, I will. The Vixens champion, by the way, who just averaged 260 in her last 271 match. 271 to be exact. I'm sorry, 271, <laughs> over 260. And she had a 300, she had an 800 in the first three games. If I'm Sagira and I go in, if I'm Jonathan Dansbury, I need to be really, really concerned right now at this moment. He's got the heavyweight title. And, uh, yeah, congratulations to him. He successfully defended also. That being said, well, that shows I'm that here, we're like, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that shows you there's a couple things you don't do. You don't whistle in the graveyard, you don't tug on Superman's cape, and you don't tick off Segura Wheeler on you the phone while she's bowling. No, you do not. Sagira became a very scary creature on her own end, and I'm not talking Halloween. If you were bowling against her, you you, you had problems. Well, speaking of problems. First shot let's here. See. This is for game one oh. as he strikes. Oh, oh ten and the pin. eight fell down. The eight well, fell down. Well, the eight fell down. That's the good news. She's got to make this. Now, if she does, if she does, she'll win because she'll mathematically get the one pin. If she does not, it is a tie. It is a two-frame roll-off. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to if Sarah Hood would have gotten that one pin. That is true. Then, then all of a sudden it turns into has to make it or she loses. Now oh. is she going to make Oh, my goodness. You're right. We have a two-frame roll-off. And now all of a sudden that extra one pin that Sarah did not get in the third frame it could come back to haunt her here. Get the one. Yes, this again. Two-frame roll-off. All right, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to remove some frames here. So I'm going to go do that. You start chatting. All right. Or you can do it and I'll start chatting. What would you like? I think you work the machines better I'll here. i work West the machines. Road. All right. You start chatting. And we Throw in all your bad puns that I don't have to listen to right and now. And we get Gordon on camera. This is what the world wants. And you know what? And what we get is more action, camera. more roll-off drama. Quote of the day, and that has been the song of the day, Wood is Good. That shows when I when you play hero ball, or even if you make a mistake or get a little frustrated at a certain leave and you don't at least get some of the food, your stomach will growl later on. And hopefully, well, it won't be famine. It'll be feast for game one for Miss Hood, Sarah Hood. Hashtag re-rate. Tater Tots has gotta be hot, especially after flagging that 10 pin. One mark definitely would have gotten her a game one victory. Not to say that she can't get the game one victory. It's just that now it's the waiting game. Speaking of game, it's all about the game and how you play it. Choose how you're going to play the game when you sign up with your crews and your teams and your alignments for the unholy alliance. Men's and women's November, early November, November 4th in Majestic Lanes. Obviously, and for the Atlantic game. Conference Kelsey's traditional one squad only Unholy Alliance, November 18th, yep, AMF East Meadow, Long Island, New York. But that's New York. This is Jersey. We're over here, Westbrook Lanes, 
roll off situation, ninth and tenth frame, Kelsey Hammond versus Sarah Hood. That shot's looking like it's gonna come up and it, and powerful. Literally TNT from Tater Tot. Explosive. Gotta love the difference in styles. The smooth, poetic style of Sarah Hood. The uh, attacking Wolverine. With, with Wolverine, I would say uh, majestic Wolverine style. All right, yeah, so let's Sarah see Hood right now, up. going up. Now, just a reminder, the string does not matter. Like the strikes and stuff, they, they have no effect on this. It is just what you do in the ninth and 10th frame. Mm -hmm. So like for argument's sake, if Sarah threw a spare instead, spare instead of a strike, everybody would be like, well, Kelsey, what, she's on a strike and he's not. No, that, that ain't how this works. Right now, it's just one strike to one strike going into the 10th frame. Mm -hmm. So basically, they both have 10. Right. So right now the score, the final score does not mean anything unless it just happens to mean something based on how they're bowling. Mm -hmm. But right now, as you said, it's 10-10 at this point. That's right. Even and though theoretically, again, if Sarah goes out the door, Kelsey will have to do the same. Or we can get back to back roll. Or we can have another tie. Hey, why not another tie? First ball, that ball looks good. It is. And as I mentioned before, when she changed her, her surface on her um, final shot in the 10th frame, mm -hmm. she saw something that she liked about that reaction. And a pin down push, a reaction, pushing down the lanes, getting a chance to play where the oil is. Use the oil that's provided to you. And, and I just have one question for Carl, because we notated this with her 8-0. Did you, like, verbally beat her up when she didn't get anything in that third frame and just at least said, get the wood? No, it is what it is. I think you can have a little bit of frustration when you throw a good shot in the pocket. A little high and you leave an 8-10. I'd be a little frustrated as well, so it is what it is. But she's got a chance for redemption here. And that shot looks good. has got to hurry, though. Comes up a little high. Uh, fourth pin does not go down. So right now we're going to have, so it'll be strike in the ninth, strike nine, assuming she makes the spare. And I think this time around, if she doesn't, Carl will verbally beat her up. So that will be a total of, uh, doing the math here, 39. So that's what Kelsey needs to beat. And again, if you're going to, if you subtract the 10th frame from the 8th frame, that's basically what your rollout score is going to be. So 213 minus 64. No, I take that back, 49. Because I cannot math right now. But I can math right now, right now, but not previously. And she'll make it so. 49 on the roll-off, that is what Kelsey needs to do. If she goes strike nine spare, then we are gonna have another roll-off. Anything more than that, she wins. Anything that less than that, she loses. The one thing I can absolutely tell you is that Kelsey's first ball here must be a strike. If it is another 10-pin, Sarah wins game one. Yes, uh, she definitely really needs to stay in that shot. Not think about the roll-off, just think about throwing a good shot. First she shot. throws a good, and oh! Now again, the, the strikes do not count. It is just ninth and 10th. So same situation, Kelsey strikes, she wins. Nine spare, we have a tie. If she does not throw at least a nine, she loses. Yeah, she, de yeah, she needs to put it right where she put it before. She needs to stay on task, like I told the audience before. Tater tot is TNT when she's throwing it the way she likes to throw it, and she's feeling good. And she's looking good on the lanes. Let's see if this shot looks good. It's for game one. Yeah. She gets it. And all of a sudden, that one pin in the third frame is going to call Sarah Hood game one. Yes, yes, definitely a haunting thought. And But you have to put it in the pass. You have to have short-term memory. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, it's a marathon. It is not a race, not a sprint necessarily. Take your time. One game at a time, one frame at a time, but you don't want it to be El Cheapo, as you like to say. No, absolutely not. I mean, this is this is going to be a long game because Sarah's, Sarah's found where she needs to go with the ball. It took her a little bit. She found it, and I'm sure that she was hoping that Kelsey did that. Kelsey did that a ball ago. At the end of game one, off of a tie break, Kelsey Hammond, 58, Sarah Hood, 49, Kelsey up 1-0. And if we have six more games like this, this will be fun. Oh, indeed, it will be That's fun. That's why I like Vixen's matches, by the way. Like I said, when it comes to whether I'm um, going through a trick or having a treat, I like a little caffeine with my sweets, you know? There you go. Very, very nice, very nice. Nice nice tagline right there. By, by the way, if Caffeine TV does use that for Halloween, uh, make sure that you give a little royalty to UVA, care of a shot knife face, huh? 
And you know I will not take credit for that. However, Sarah Hurd up game two. I expect to see her firing. She pretty much knows where to put the ball. And I'm sure she's going to be a little bit cranky after letting game one get away from her. Even though she came back in. And here we go. I feel like if we don't get 300, we'll get 279 out of Sarah Hood this game. I, I, let's put it this way. I, I think it will be much higher than the 203 that she shot in regulation in game one. Yeah, Significantly higher. Sometimes you got to piss yourself off just to make sure you don't get pissed on. And right now, she's tired of being the hydrant. She'd rather yeah. be the, she'd rather be the cool be dog, yeah. So right now, Kelsey trying to figure stuff out. She did make a good change in the 10th frame, because if you remember last time around, she left the 10th pin in the regular one, which is how we got to the roll off, but then redeemed herself, got the, the other first two strikes. Uh, we're gonna make the assumption that she's gonna stay on that same line and that same approach, which she will, she gets the same result. Strike, strike, here we go, second frame. Uh, didn't you make mention about, um, I don't know, heavyweight contenders? We're looking at two of them right here. You know, thinking about that, I can see either of them going into the World Heavyweight Series and, and making some noise on, on the men's side. Yeah, I'm stirring that pot. I said it. You can stir that pot. <laughs> I think a lot of people would, would would take Kelsey or Sarah and lay some money on them against the current heavyweight champion. <laughs> I'm not saying I would because I respect everybody, but I think a bunch of people will. Especially if we keep seeing, oh. I was about to say, especially if we keep seeing strikes like that, I pre, uh, pre-verbalized nine pin coming up there. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bilingual right there. German, nine. Nine. Not only the number, but the answer is no to that to that strike. Yes, nine of the strike, nine of the pin. So for those who are just joining us, we're starting game two. And where have you been for game one? Game one was fun. We had a roll-off situation. Kelsey Hammond throws three strikes inside roll-off to win. Mm -hmm. Sarah Hurd White now looking to get three strikes of her own to take a quick lead on Kelsey in game two. Just doing a little fantasy booking in my mind. Imagine having two of these ladies on your team for Unholy Alliance. That could be fun. It could be very fun. Have you, I was gonna say, are you gonna approach him at the interview later? You know what? Why, Why not? not put it in the air? Why not put it in the air? Sarah Hood right now, oh, she's on the ball way out there and it's gonna come way back. Oh, nothing like the snapback. They say if it's truly yours, it always comes back yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, and that came back for her. Yeah, strikes were in the air, right? Definitely came back for her. And again, that's sort of what Kelsey was playing in terms of the line, albeit not that extreme. But that's what Kelsey is doing. Sarah's sort of been aping her line a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, when I when I say aping, because I'm not sure a number of people are going to say, what the heck is Gordon talking about? Yeah, that's bananas. Ha <laughs> ha. To ape is to imitate. And basically, if you're going to ape a line, you're going to try to imitate and copy the line. That's what she's doing right there. And right now, she's trying to imitate three strikes in a row. Oh, that looks good, and it is. Oh, you mentioned ape in the shot. Well, she, well, that, yeah. was, that was good to go, and that was nothing realer than that. I, I said at the end of game one, she was going to come out firing, and that is exactly what she's done. Mm -hmm. And if Kelsey is not careful, she's going to wind up in the same position that Sarah was in game one, which is looking at a deficit that she's going to try really hard to climb out of. Having right now, that ball looks good. It is. Very good. Sarah, right now, Sarah Hood and Kelsey going at it. Potential 280 finish for Kelsey Hammonds. Potential, well, yeah. Trey Bomb. Which which we've seen in the last fix and some match, so it wouldn't shock me to see it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was not for a silly little nine pin over on the over on lane 41 in the second frame, we'd be tied three strikes apiece. Indeed we would. But again, this has got to, from Kelsey, this has got to be another strike. You cannot. The line that Sarah's got, you cannot afford, afford to fall behind on this. Hammond right now, ooh, ooh that ball's hook. leaked out there. And yeah, finishing behind the head pin right there. Thankfully, it came back. She got lucky to only leave the 10 pin. That, yes. that ball could have been a mess, but the whole lot of, a whole bunch of little trick-or-treaters looking for candy on that Indeed, shot. Indeed, yeah, straight up. Knocking on the door and leaving something rather nasty on the doorstep. A tarantula. Yeah. A rubber spider. <laughs> Or a flaming a dry balloon. <laughs> or a flaming open. Or and not. it looks like she'll make the spare she will. Well, they're happy about the spare, however, and a big however here. 
<laughs> well, we're joking around because she made a 10-pin, unlike the reason why we had a game one roll off when she flagged at wide left. Oh. I can see that. Kelsey said the 10-pin and I do not get along. Now, Sarah's hoping that her and lane 42 do get along because she almost made a little mess there, but all the pins went down. Fourth frame here, Hood looking for four in a row, and she'll get it, that one was buried. Oh yeah, Sarah Hood is definitely not through with 42 or 41 for that matter. And you know, Sarah played a little game, you could tell in her head, called uh, questions and answers. Yes. The question is, why am I not getting the carry? So no. she kept on searching until she found said answer. No, well no, the question is, why am I not up 1-0? And I think she's taking it on game two at this point. Which will be another question and another answer. Another question, another answer, looking for five in a row here. Mm -hmm. And again, starting to build a lead. She's already up by 30. A strike here, she'll be up by 40 on Kelsey. And it doesn't matter what Kelsey does on 42. If she doesn't have the answer to 41, and Sarah does, there's questions and answers. Mm -hmm. And then Kelsey's game two is going to be in jeopardy. Well, let's see if Whether uh, or not, regardless of if Ken Jennings or Ryan Bialik is hosting. Well, Sarah continues to sway, and um, this one has the answers. Sarah's got the answer so far, up by 40 in game two. Kelsey is looking for a daily double at this point. Yes, I'm going to throw every single Jeopardy game show reference that I can. If you guys know me and my background, you will understand exactly why I am doing that. Because mm. chances are you may have seen some of my stuff on TV. Kelsey right now looking for something on your TV, and there's a strike. Yes. Uh, all, her all her frames on the right lane have been great. And it seems like, well, if they're dating... They're definitely going Dutch. Well, she's playing back row bingo right now in lane 41. And as we both have said, going Dutch will not win you this game. No, no, you do not want a Dutch. No. Going Dutch, you could possibly lose this game by 100 if you understand what my rift is at this point. Mm-hmm, indeed. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Hey, forget the Dutch. You just want to get on a roll. That is true. Right now, Kelsey's looking for the daily double first one. There oh, it is. Oh, my No, goodness. there it is not. Are you kidding me? Another eight pin. I was like, there it is. Oh, no, it's not. There's the eight pin. You Carl know, goes, it's a little high. Mm. Yeah, it's a little high, but eight pin, nine pin, eight pin. I'm sorry, no, eight pin, ten pin, eight pin. We haven't seen the nine yet. Well, that definitely was a petrified tree right there. Oh, my goodness. Kelsey's going to try to make the spare. She will. At least it's not another ten pin. Well, this is a situation where, when you think about it, you really can't be upset because you're not throwing no. it. You're not throwing it bad. It's just that they're throwing it better. This is well, a situation say, of you, you losing and getting beat. Yeah, if you, you can't be upset if you're Kelsey right now because that, let's put it this way, that eight pin that she left in the second frame, that could be at this point, well, that's enough, I'm losing the game. Regardless of the other two, because Sarah right now through five is not made a mistake. Six frame coming up, that ball looks good. Ooh, I almost thought it was gonna kick out the 10, it was not. All right, there's the first non-strike. Yeah, that ball took, took a while to turn the corner. And uh, she, it hit pretty flat. It didn't, didn't get that, that fluid ripple effect that she wanted, like the other shots. Assuming that Sarah makes a spare, she will be up by 39 pins going into the second half of game two, theoretically the seventh frame. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Best that Sarah can do is 279. Best that Kelsey can do at this point is a 240. That obviously will, 240 will not be good enough if Sarah continues to strike. And Kelsey not on a strike, she's only on a spare. So that 39, assuming that she makes this, is going to be Cannon going into the seventh frame. Sarah Hutt has not missed a makeable spare, and she will not miss one now. Exactly. And right now, the energy, <laughs> <laughs> the energy is very good right now for, for Sarah Hood. Carl's right. talking a little junk over to Sarah. And since they live in the same apartment complex, I'm going to make the assumption that he can do that and get away with it. I'm going to say if we talk the exact same junk to her at this moment, we'll probably be eating the bowling ball. <laughs> yeah, right. We're definitely seeing the, um, the, uh, little, the pendulum shift a little bit. But right now, seventh frame. Keep in mind, again, she shot a 7.60 earlier on today. So her shooting a 279 would not exactly be outside the realm of achievement, but she leaves a 10-pin and shows how mathematically things can change in a matter of time. From 300 potentially to 279 potentially to now potentially 258. 268. 268. Indeed, 268. She goes out 268, still plenty of cushion. And again, Kelsey, for even for us to have this conversation about Kelsey's trying to steal game two, she has to either 
figure out how to throw a strike on lane 41 or figure out how to make Sarah open on the set frame. She needs either or or if she gets neither, actually she'll need both. And she's not getting the open part. Sarah's gonna make another 10 pin. Mm -hmm. With ease, I may say, like not in doubt. No, well, definitely made it with ease. Uh, notice a little something at the, uh, different at the bottom of the ball right there. Looks like she squeezed that 10 pin a little bit. The plastic surface saved that, but mechanically stays down beautifully right there watching and posting her shot. And what now Kelsey needs to do is post a strike and copy it and paste it to lane 41. Assuming that she can continue to strike on lane 42. Well, she could apply some pressure. There's a first assumption right out. there. She's got to make that on lane 42. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, here's her shot on lane 42. When she does oh. not do it now. I said this about Sarah game one. I'm going to say this now about Kelsey game two. Kelsey is now running out of frames. Indeed. Because we've already noted spares will not be good enough. I do not see Sarah going open, open, open. Not the way she's doing the ball. Not the way that she's making 10 pins. And keep in mind, Kelsey has already missed a 10 pin on lane 42. Mm. If she does it again here, then this one, I mean, this one's close to being over anyway, but it get, would get a lot closer. Right there, and that one. And now that we've just said that she just flags it, so. Now, instead of 240, the best she can do is 218. That is the best she can do. And right there, she uh, definitely Which means Sarah can afford one. an open or even two opens and still be in control of this game. So this this one's being close to being tied up one game apiece. Yeah, she definitely could do that. I'm, I don't think she would or should I or wants to. I don't think she will. Ah. She's my teammate. <laughs> I know my teammate. My teammate's not going to do that. Well. Kelsey right now, eighth frame. Will she get the strike here? Mm. Well, at least it's a different pen. It's a four pin. It definitely is a four pin. And contrasting styles again. Sarah Hood um, playing really in, like, not really inside, but a little more about the draw, like I said, letting the ball roll in the oil. And I'll take the top. Her speed is her key factor because she plays strong and she plays down and in. Powerful shot. One thing about it, though, sometimes it can be too much ball, especially as the lanes start to break down. To be fair, you can make an argument right now that Kelsey should have the front five also. And argument there's no reason why you couldn't make that, that argument because eight pin, 10 pin, okay, fine, 10 pin, but two eight pins on that, really? Well, they're both on a string if it was no tap. Well, yes, they would both be on a string <laughs> if it was no tap. Sarah is not on a string, except she's looking to string this one out and to get on the win column. Couple more, couple more marks will do that. She does not need a strike here. She just needs to mark out. Though I will say a strike would be nice. She's not getting on this shot, seven pin. So now these, these taps would have been good for Kelsey, considering that Kelsey was able to start stringing strikes. Well, but if you're Sarah Hood at this point, you don't mind the taps. Mm -hmm. Because again, you don't need strikes. You just need makeable spares. Easy. As long as you get seven pin, eight pin, nine pin, she's good. She just doesn't want to see her friendly eight ten up there. Like she did in game one, that that was clearly cost her. Mm -hmm. And when you're as gifted as Sarah Hood is, and as a lot of the Vixens are, or bowlers for that matter, no matter whether they're a Vixen or not, when you see your adjustment and when you make that choice, because Gordon loves to say it's all about choices and making good decisions, make a decision and stick with it. Well, she made a good decision there. Sarah is up by 49 pins going to the ninth frame. Both fixings on spare. So basically, a six, she wins game. Six, she wins game two. Yes, and that's got to feel good Seven, for Miss Actually, no, not, not yet, but she's, she'll be in good, obviously, mark in the ninth or tenth frame. She'll do it. She doesn't necessarily need a mark. She does need more than six. Because mm -hmm. that'll six out when we put her out at 199. Mm -hmm. Yes, and all Kelsey can't go up to be a two away. Yes, Sarah shot here. That looks a little bit light. Again. Oh, you almost, something makeable. Ooh, almost had a Pat Hollis situation over here. Almost saw uh, almost. two eight ten. Almost had that ten goes down. At least a two four eight. Again, makeable. If she makes this, that will put her at a two one, and then she'll just need some sort of count in the tenth frame. Yes. As I may mention to before. I mean, she's at a 201 right now. So if she mm -hmm. makes it, it's a 204. And then she really needs a limited count. And that is assuming, of course, that Kelsey strikes out, which is going to be hard for her to do, being that she hasn't thrown a strike on lane 41 this game. 
and it looks like she may have lost her look on lane 42 also. But if you're gonna lose your look, now's the time to do it when your opponent is doing that. Gives you more than enough time to regroup going to game three. That's All a spare that. that, yeah, that will pretty much end game two right there. Yeah, uh, I was looking at looks uh, spares like that, especially a uh, two, uh, two, four, eight. Makeable, yet missable. We saw that earlier in the Leah match, you know, missing makeable spares and sometimes making missable spares. <laughs> sometimes it flips and it I flops. That's too. Well, you'd rather make missable spares than miss makeable ones. Aha, uh -huh. M&Ms, how sweet. Yes, yes. Now what Kelsey really needs to do in the ninth and 10th frame is to figure out where her strike ball's gotta go because it can't be where she put it in game two. That being said, that ball looks very good. Well, that's where she should do it, right there. That was a beautiful shot. It actually looked now, like she slowed her flight. Now, how you figure out lane 41? Well, that's where, that's where it's tough because it's not like she's throwing it bad where she would have to she's rethink lane 41. Uh, only thing I would just tell myself is just to take an extra breath, slow my feet down so that way I can flow a little more. Because sometimes when we get riled up, you know, we have bowlers know, get that adrenaline rush, you start you start pushing the ball more, and then you they start tapping more. They think she's got to slow it down. She's just got to slow her feet down. Everything else will follow. All right, well, let's see if she listens to her advice there. Maybe she did. That ball looks really nice. Potential 208 finish. Yep, 208 finish. Right now, Sarah's got a 204. So if Kelsey goes out, Sarah needs three pins. Pressure. <laughs> Well, we, we've seen stupid things happen. As long as the game is not mathematically out, I'm never going to say the game is over. Mm. I can think the game is over. The game is not over. I would say she should not start spare shooting, practicing her temperance yet. Yeah, definitely slow the ball. Down. Well, not the ball, slow her feet down. And as you can see, her hand getting really under the ball right there, getting a little forward roll push. And it looks like she's a lot more in rhythm, ready to just let this game go. She knows she's not down 2-0. She's actually tied 1-1. So and Now, you know, we were talking before about missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. If Kelsey made the spare in the ah. seventh frame, Ooh. she would force Sarah to do something more than get three pins. Word of the day, philanthropic. Yes, very philanthropic. She will finish out for a 208. Hold on one second. Sarah, you have to rewrap. Yeah. Pesky eight pin again. So Sarah knows she's gonna have to re-rack. I've got Kelsey Hammonds around here. First of all, we're tied one apiece, and we sort of thought this this game's gonna go seven. So so far, this is going pretty much what we thought. Talk to me about what you found at the end of game two, because that looked a lot better than the beginning of game two. Yeah, I I <laughs> I changed balls to something maybe that I could trust a little bit more. I just wasn't in a comfortable spot, but I think with those last four uh, balls, I feel a lot more comfortable now. So with the opportunity of not, you know, how this game goes, I was like, hey, you know, if we not win this one, let's try a different ball, see what else, get a good view for the next three. Well, you won the first game, you came in clutch in overtime, so to speak, in game one. So that did give you a chance to turn around and go, okay, let's look at my arsenal, let's see what else I have. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hi, now. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to bring this up. Oh, hi, Mom. I'm not going to be unfortunate about that. That's a fun thing. But if you made the spare in oh, yeah. the seventh frame, oh, yeah, yeah. and if she does that, then we're looking at another roll-off right. situation. Oh, jeez, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like really yeah, 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 yeah. It's good for TV, but it's good it's for not TV. Good for my heart. <laughs> well, I'm sorry my about mind. that. <laughs> it's not Whatever. good for our throat cages, by the way, when we have to talk about it and stretch oh, people yeah. into the mic either. <laughs> It is what it is, whatever. And there's the open, so right missed, missed opens cost everybody now. Now it's Kelsey's turn to be uh, philanthropic. philanthropic. At the end of game two, Sarah Hood, 220, Kelsey, two, Kelsey having 208. We are tied one game apiece. So right now I believe Kelsey starts, so we'll chat, chat with you. What's your thoughts now after the first two games? Uh, um, I'm just trying to make shots. I'm trying not to think too much, to be honest. <laughs> Take notes, bowlers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thinking causes problems, so yeah. Just trying to take it one shot at a time. I know it's cliche, but like, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, I'm gonna wish you luck. good luck the rest of the way. Even though I know this, and I was joking around with um, uh, in South Carolina last weekend about it. They were saying, what, is, what do commentators like the best? Game sevens. Hey, hey we already had so one always, earlier. 
Yeah, you may not be rooting for a game seven if you're up during the match, but obviously best of luck. No, well, best of luck. If you're down game six, you're definitely rooting for a game seven. All right, good luck. All right, so we have a little bit of a recess here. Talk to me, give us your thoughts on uh, what you've seen so far, first two games. Because well, this has been a fun match so far. And you know what, and we're only going into game three, and we got three with a little extra on the side with that roll off. I'm loving what I'm seeing. So far, it's been an amazing day of bowling. We're watching Kelsey Hammonds do her thing. TNT, it's not just for tater tot, it's for what she possesses with each dynamic throw. And we get the stylings of Miss Hood, Sarah Hood, Messenger Mafia, getting a chance to see someone we could be seeing a little more of down the line. Well, this is Sarah's debut on Caffeine TV and on the UBA streams. This is not Sarah's debut on um, like YouTube videos and stuff like that. She's gotten a reputation uh, from being in Britain and doing very well in tours all over Britain, which is one of the reasons why she's got that re-rate jersey on. It took her a little bit of time to adjust getting onto the American lanes. Obviously, now she's quite figured it out. So all of a sudden, here she comes. I can only imagine what it would be like to uh, have an opponent or a partner like Sarah Hood. You know, maybe I'm just putting my bid in now. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, pick me. Pick me with my hand up, but all jokes aside, you know, even though I'm saying that in just, there's no joke in what we're seeing here. An amazing contest just for just to start. Yeah, I just I just want to tell you something which is pretty funny. Kelsey was wishing Sarah good luck and waiting for Sarah to bowl, not realizing that she's got to start game three. Mm. And then she put the proverbial finger to her head going, oh, yeah, I knew that. She heard so, you from a distance. Well, but both girls, this is pure sportsmanship, both, both girls know each other. Uh, they, they like each other as friends, so this is going to be a little bit more on the fun side than the intense side, even though it is going to be intense. And the 10 pin falls down. Oh, All man. of a sudden, four in a row for Kelsey on lane 41. That's that it. last one obviously showing up in the first frame of game three. Oh, a little TNT with a BT, tater top with the back tap on the 10 yep. pin. That, by the way, that would not be considered a farkle, correct? No. A farkle would be, and this is, of course, According to Carl, would be a messenger spinning around and taking off. Yeah, going around across the lanes. I did not do that. That is just a sole tip. Sarah's hoping that she doesn't need a farkle, and she's going to need a little bit more than that. She only got that. Hmm. Now, I'm a, I'm a little curious about that, that switch. So I, uh, one of the OGs told me a minute ago, if you have a good look, why all of a sudden are you switching? Because I used to switch a lot. And maybe she believes she just wanted to maybe playing the long game, seeing what will react a certain way down the line for the breakdown. There's a method to everyone's madness. Well, if you saw early, she did go strike, 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 strike. But then she didn't get another strike after the fifth frame. So in her mind, she needs to make a change. Was that the right change? No. But she does get the spare. Mm. A little bit sloppy, but she got it. So we are tied 10-10 as we go into frame two. For all of those that have just joined us, mm -hmm. we are in game three. We are tied one game apiece between Kelsey Hammond, former Northeast Fixers champion, and newcomer to the scene, Sarah Hood. Is from the Messenger Mafia. The Messenger Mafia. Messenger Mafia. M&M's, not always sweet. Well, M&M's, well, usual suspects had a very sweet win early on today. Congratulations to yeah, them. Yeah, uh, not to say who it was, but I believe Sarah threw an arsenal of strikes on them. Well, she may have. Now, the question is, does she have more in her gallery? Yes, she does. So, we have a strike from Sarah on lane 41. Now, Kelsey keeps on lane 42. She'll take the lead if she does not throw a strike. Then we're either tied or Sarah takes the lead again. Indeed. And, you know, just to quote um, one of the UBA OGs himself, Mr. Dennis McMillan, one thing he likes to always say is chase your mechanics. And if you want to get an, an idea of what that looks like, I would say it looks how Sarah Hood throws it. Check how both fixes are bowling. Both fixes are tacticians. Check everybody's mechanics. Kelsey looking for two in a row to take the lead in game three. She will. Quick 10 pin lead on the board for Kelsey Hammond as we go into the third frame. Obviously, Sarah only 10 pins behind. She's got a strike, so we're looking at Trey versus 290. Yes, indeed, and you guys just love it. Little lockjaw action right there, sinking the teeth in there, and then aiming, and then firing and locking in a target. She, I told you, Tater Top throws a torpedo, but it's a beautiful torpedo with motion and skill. Well, even though her last match on Caffeine TV was not a win, she's had many wins on the streaming circuit. That's one of the reasons why she's gotten the Northeast Fixes title. She's looking to prove her dominance again. Another shot that's Perry. Three in a row for Kelsey Hammond. And the screaming Kelsey Hammonds that we're used to seeing on Caffeine TV is now showing up. 
<laughs> and See, I was where's that 10 pin now? Yeah, yes. Then, 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 then boo boo to the 10 yeah, pin. Yeah, then boo boo 10 pin. And you know what? And even though some of you may see on camera and you see it, you know, jumping into the pocket, looking like it's super fast, I get a chance to see both, both bowlers and their hands and where they're finishing. And you could just see every little intricate detail like you see on that shot. Smooth fluidity right now in motion as Gordon sips his water. It's delicious water. Just like that was a delicious strike from Sarah. That's now 2-0 and for her. Mm -hmm. That would be the correct adjustment, by the way, and what you saw, and Carl's just like, Carl said a couple of things that we probably cannot say on Caffeine TV. I'll say crikey. Mm -hmm. That would be a G-rated version. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he, a whole lot of scythe. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> I'm glad she made the adjustment about frigging time, <laughs> about forking time. Maybe I'll we'll use that. Yeah, she's I'll getting, her, ar she, he she's she's getting her arse in motion. Yeah, well, yeah, well, let's see if that ball's in motion now. It is. Speaking three of motion, in a row for Sarah motion Hood. here we go. Who wants to see two games in the upper 250s right now, at least? I do. Don't you? Know you? I do too. I do too. Hey, like I said, well, the first one was a nice, um, beautiful, relaxing, and sentimental cup of caffeine. We're yes. getting espresso right here. We're, we're, we're getting espresso. Hopefully there will be no sour sop mm. in the drink, even though that, that is a great additive, but not with caffeine and not with coffee. But it does really well with four strikes in a row. Chelsea Hammond, four bagger, here we go. Good. T and T herself. The T is for Tater, the second T is for Tot. Back to frame 41. Back to the fifth frame here, old frame. Lane 41, fifth frame. We're getting close to frame 41. But oh, we're not there yet. We are not there. Kelsey but Hammond. we will get there. <laughs> we will get there. Kelsey Hammond with the front four, but she's only up by 10. So she's got to keep striking. She's got to keep going. You know, gas pedal. She's staying on there. Let's see if she's still got some petrol left. Uh, that ball's and good. And the pin oh! falls down. Five in a row for Kelsey Hammond. Oh, the 10 pin with a little delay. I, I, I think she almost forget her going nan any poo poo to the 10 pin. The 10 pin almost go. stood up and said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess I'll fall down. <laughs> in the spirit of smooth criminal doing the, the, the MJ lean. Kelsey, right. are you OK? Kelsey, are you OK? Well, right now she is. Are you OK, Sarah Kelsey? Hood, Sarah Hood right now. Gauntlet passed over. Sarah's got to throw a strike here to stay only down by 10. There's that ball. That shot looks good, and it is not tempered. Now, even in the midst of that tap right there, I love how in the midst of all the strikes, the impact, still, peace be still, and right now she is keeping her composure very, very champion-like. This is definitely not her first time throwing a ball, as you can oh, tell. Oh, no. Well, not the first time throwing a ball, not the first time in match. I mean, the first time in UBA match play, but not the first time mm -hmm. as a match play bowler. You know, she's a, she's new to this, but she's a veteran. This is not going to phase her. I'll guarantee you she'll make the spare. She does. You know what? Just to quote uh, one of the lines in the Jesse Owens movie where the coach was speaking to Jesse. He said, they will love you, they will hate you. In the end, it's all just noise. And when you shut the noise out, nothing can stop you except you. All right now. No, nothing can stop Kelsey, period, and Sarah may be shut down very soon. 119 in the fifth, which is usually very good, but she's in danger of falling down 31. So six frame coming up. Strike needs to be there. That one's got to hurry. Her, and that ball's a little bit high, and she doesn't completely pay for it. She only she does leave the 610, however. And as we did say in game two and in game one, spares do not beat strikes. Mm -mm. And it will not matter what Sarah does if Kelsey throws another five strikes. Yeah, she didn't really look. Obviously, that she would love seven, shot. but five will do it. Indeed. Um, I, great, and if Sarah doesn't strike, less than that. Great targeting, but there didn't really look so confident on that release. Looked like she might have second guessed it. Maybe it didn't feel good in her hand. We'll never know. Well, what we do now, Sarah's trying to make the spare. That ball looks like she'll make it. She will. Basically, all Sarah can do is sit and see if Kelsey's going to get as lucky as she has been. Though on 42, she has not been lucky at all. She has buried it. Questionable shots have been coming from lane 41. Mm. That being said, they all look good there. Kelsey well, right now up by 23, threatening to be up by even more. 
And again, if she goes front seven, that 23 will be 43. Yeah. With Sarah running out of frames. But more importantly, Kelsey looking to do what Segura Wheeler did on the last spot, and we got a balk. And again, you have these bullies here that are professional, and they know. She knows, okay, got to stop, got to reset. Got to do what I need to do. I'm like, and we've seen it, other bowlers, that are just going to plow through and be like, okay, maybe I correct, can correct myself in midstream and then make a hideous mess up there. Both bowlers professional. Both Vixens know what they're doing. Kelsey right now wants to do six in a row, and she will. You know, it's almost like uh, Kelsey has her W-2s. She's getting um, refunds for all those beautiful shots she threw on lane 41 and did not get. So getting a little back tax right there. Yeah, she's, she's trying to cash in those receipts. And she's into it. Well, the, the tags that she had an issue with on the back pins were on lane 41. However, lane 41's been really nice for including that 10 pin that just fell down in the fifth frame. Mm -hmm. Seven frame here, that ball's gotta hurry very, very quickly. And it will. It does. Kelsey mm. puts it buried in that. And then we got front seven and Caffeine TV sorta likes his strikes. Yeah, you know what? You Can know, we be like seeing another three-digit number that starts with the number three? Mm -hmm. That ends with two zeros. So I'm well, not going to say well, it. Well, the wheels are rolling, and maybe wheels she could also follow Miss or Doctor Wheeler, rather. Yes. I don't want no problems. <laughs> no. And if Sigur, if you're listening, hi. Sarah Hood, right now, seventh frame, trying to regroup here. She will not temp it. Now, if I'm Sarah at this point, I'm going to be running out of frames, and more importantly, there's nothing that I can do at this point if my opponent's got the front seven. Mm. I need to start making adjustments and getting ready for game four, don't you think? Well, I'm seeing something in, 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 my, in my interesting mind. I see Sarah playing a long game. No, she is not using the ball she used before where she won game two. But also, I see her kind of creating a situation for herself, knowing that it's going to be a long game. So she, I feel like she's seeing what all situations could potentially look like. Sometimes having foresight is the right sight. And we're going to see if that pays off now. I see a lot of mixing and matching right there, a lot of slow cooking. Sarah's hoping for a game foresight. I like what you did there. And meanwhile, we're, we're looking at some issues over at lane 42. Sarah showing extraordinarily sportsmanlike conduct and trying to re-rack over Kelsey. Yeah. Because again, this is, you don't see this all the time, but you do in the Vixens where, you know, you can make that separation, you know, on the sportsmanship level between playing well and being kind of calm to your opponent. One of the fun things about the UBA is you get that. Let's see, what are we going to be getting from Sarah in the eighth frame? We're going to be getting a strike. Yes, and that was a beautiful shot there. You know, the pins indeed showing both opponents respect because on lane 42, the pins don't want to show up to work. No. And speaking of work, Kelsey Hammond, Tater Todd herself, TNT, definitely putting in the work in game three. So, like I said, I feel like Sarah Hood is playing the long game. She already sees what works in one situation, and she could just stick with that and strike. But well, Sarah, is, if she goes out, she's going to finish with a 246 and be woefully short. Mm -hmm. Which is saying something here. Kelsey, right now, eight frame that ball. Oh, no. Ten pin. Good run from Kelsey. Great run. Uh, potential 279 finish. Provided that she makes her 10 pin, something that she says that um, it's not she her favorite like thing to do. She doesn't like the 10 pin. Well, now here's the interesting thing. If she and the 10 pin do not get along, we're going to do some quick math here momentarily. Mm. Door's not completely shut on Sarah mm, at this no, moment. No, it is not. Is she going to oh, make Lord. a 10 pin? No, she's not. You know, Kelsey has decided after the front seven to maybe make this game a little bit more interesting. Kelsey has a 207 right now in the eighth frame. Obviously, she can go out the door for a 267. Sarah will not be able to catch that. Sarah can do a 246. If Sarah goes out the door, Kelsey will not only need two marks, she will need two marks with very good pin count. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be crazy for me to say this. If Kelsey opens here, Sarah can steal this game and lock Kelsey out. And on cue, eight pin. Now, I don't see her missing an eight pin. However, this now has become a very interesting game. What's In going on here? Interesting to say the least. Finishing behind the head pin, not taking out the 10 pin on lane 42. Going straight through, getting too much of a great reaction to the point where they dance around the 8 pin. But right now, 
Kelsey is not dancing right now. She has got to be fuming at that. But she keeps her composure and covers her eight pin spare. Well, here's the interesting thing. If Sarah goes out the door, that is a 246. My math is correct here. If Sarah goes oh. out the door, in order for Kelsey to win, her first ball must be a strike. Nine spare strike, and we've got another tie with the assumption that Sarah goes out the door. However, Sarah's got to go out the well. door, which means she needs this strike in the ninth frame, and here it is. Ball's coming up. That ball's a little bit light. She's not going to get the strike. And all of these stuff that I was talking about, I can just flush down the toilet at this moment. Or, well, you, maybe you could just put your finger Shandai on the handle, but I was grabbing his head, and you were grabbing your head going, oh, my goodness, Gordon is absolutely right. He's doing the math here. Yeah, yeah, your math was mathing. Yeah, however, she needed to get the strike in the ninth. She did not, so mathematically, this game's going to be over. Kelsey will not need a mark. Nine open gives her 236, and the best that Sarah can do now is looking at 220, so. I believe the most she can do now is uh, 226. 226. Yep. So, she will make the spare. I mean, this has been 220s no good, 230s no good. You, you don't see this stuff in the heavyweight match. You don't see this stuff in the cruiserweight Not match. Not for a while. No. Y'all better, better start um, drinking your raw egg yolks and start choking <laughs> up some steps. These vixens ain't playing. No, they are not. So right now, time frame. And again, it really, basically, it doesn't really matter what she does at this point. Again, best she can do is 226. Kelsey does not need a mark. She's already at 217. Let's see if Sarah can figure out something for game four. That one looked good. Ooh, got a real leg up on that shot. Yeah, well, she did that now. Now, I'm sure now that ninth frame, she's almost sort of wondering what if because I am not 100% convinced that if Kelsey needed to strike in that 10th thing, she was going to get it. Mm. And you may be right. Like I said, Sarah is in the kitchen and cooking something that certain bowlers will definitely see. Even though she used that pin down surface earlier to give her a great reaction, got through the pocket, she wanted to see what would happen down the line. She is right now baking is either Vixen and shot making under a, deuce a yet? masterful I dish. I don't think either Vixen shot under a deuce yet. Yeah, 203, 203 game one. Then you had Sarah win like 240 to 220, and now we have this. And both bowlers are gonna, well, that pin's not gonna fall down. Yeah. So Sarah will finish somewhere in the two teens. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, you know what, hey, shooting higher than the cruiserweights, some of the heavyweights, and you know what? I'm just saying, watch out heavyweight list well, Carl's in the telling, future. Exactly, Carl's telling Sarah to try the hustle. And so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And she, she actually went the rated G vernacular, unlike Carl who didn't. And one thing Sarah's definitely doing, she's having fun with each shot and um, she's keeping the game fun. Oh, I think she's enjoying herself out here regardless of what happens. I think yeah. both Vixens are enjoying themselves out here. Regardless of what happens, it's almost a shame that somebody has to lose and it's just sort of like, well. Little area check. Area check. Look like maybe she picked up the Black Widow, can't tell. I know, I will know one shot that she tried out the Exotic Gem a couple games ago. Um, that that dough ball that had to pin down surface gave her the best look through the oil, but she's playing the long game again. And I feel she's creating a certain line for herself to be real comfortable down the line. Right now, Kelsey has been very comfortable on lanes 41 and 42. Mm -hmm. She had a little misstep in the eighth frame, but she picked herself right back up. She'll finish at least in the 240s, probably closer to 250s. Potential, yep, potential 257, provided that she throws all three strikes. Yep. And one thing Kelsey has to do is get comfortable with the 10-pin. Uh, she may be a little tense with it, missing it so much that she is holding back. And what she needs to do is exaggerate every 10-pin shot. And you know what? Speaking of heavyweight, we have not just oh, wait, a heavyweight. Well, we'll, we'll get there when we finish out game three. Let's finish, it. Let's finish this out first. <laughs> but you know we, what? We, we have Speak a mystery guest who will no longer be a mystery momentarily. Is that indeed, indeed? And let's see if uh, the TNT still 
Still is ready to explode right here in their lanes right here in lane 42. Getting Can all the back right tech now. strikes that she did not get before. She has more than enough. Potential 247. And I say potential because, well, Tenpin and her have not gotten along. She has been waving American flags. She has been very patriotic with her Tenpin attempts. Let's see if she tests out really staying down, really coming all the way through, exaggerating the lift, and see if she can get that ball down the lane and take the 10-pin out. And she's, and she did a thing. She Kelsey did a thing again. On, on hitting the 10 -pin. At the end of game three, Kelsey Hammond 247, Sarah Hood 215. Kelsey up two games to one. And meanwhile, while we're here, I will welcome somebody that right now his Halloween costume is the Northeast Heavyweight Champion. Even though I, I guess you still will have this for Halloween, and that is yes. your current Northeast Heavyweight Champion, Jonathan Dansbury. Yes, hey, what's going on, guys? So, uh, so to pop in. Heard of his match down here. Mm. Um, yeah, so fun times here. I guess I missed quite a bit so far in three games. Mm -hmm. well, you missed a two-frame roll-off for starters. You missed I, a bunch yeah. of things. So while yes, we brief you in, in terms of what's going on, yeah. Sarah Hood's going to start game four, and Sarah Hood is going to start with a wiggling six-pin. 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 So, so what's going on, guys? How are we all doing today? So we're, well, we're all doing good. Yeah. We actually, uh, we were thinking, and we were talking, yes. and we're looking. Which is always dangerous when we do that, and <laughs> seeing Segura Wheeler doing what she's doing, and I know that you've said this is the era of you, oh. how would you feel if Segura went after your title? I'm sort of curious as to, <laughs> as to that. If Sierra goes after your belt, because there may be a lot of people that would be betting against you at that point. Well, first of all, there's already a lot of people that are betting against me as it is in every match so far. So. Congratulations on your win, by the way, today. Th thank you. Th thank you very much. Um, yeah, you, now, I, yeah, not, not a lot of people bet, bet, you know, a lot of people bet against me. I mean, it'd just be another match. People bet against me, and I may just have to shock the world. I don't know. You know, if I, and, if I, and if I may quote a and, former anyway, world well, champion, it's sometimes they say, I guess, your best shot is no shot. And speaking of shots, Kelsey getting ready to throw her first shot up on lane 42. Kelsey here starting off game four. She's been hot and she continues to be hot. There's a strike that by Kelsey. That shot was a lot better for her that time instead of her second shot in the tenth there. Very good. Yes, it, it definitely is. And she's been throwing the ball well. Both, both ladies have been throwing the ball very well. Um, that first shot for Sarah Hood wasn't her best, but then again, she's um, really getting a feel for the lanes. You know, could be breaking down for her. We're going to see what her adjustment will be. Meanwhile, Kelsey up on lane 41 seems like she's made a good adjustment herself. And she gets there, and Tater Tot is still hot TNT. And TNT is not just for Tater Tot, it's also for what she possesses. Right now, Kelsey with the double. So I'd like to thank Jonathan for showing up a little bit and having some fun. Yeah, a little cameo. A little cameos. You know. Cameos in the UBA are always fun and unexpected. Mm -hmm. Usually appreciated. Sarah would appreciate a strike right here in the second frame. And she won't get one. She's starting to lose her line a little bit. There you go, getting a little bit of an over-under reaction. More skid than flip. Waiting for the flip. The flip was a little late to the date. It is a two pin. Right now, this is sort of how game three started. Kelsey with the front seven. And Sarah, even though she was able to mark, she was clean. And she's been clean since the start of game two, is not getting the carry right now. And again, if you're down two one, you don't want to be in a situation where you're falling too far apart here. Yes. But will make the spare, which he will. Yeah. So Sarah, again, though, a little bit behind going into frame three. Going into frame three, trying to marginalize those errors as much as you can. Try to make sure you close that window before the window stays open and that draft then feels like a blizzard. Yeah, draft it feels like a blizzard. Not only that, but Tater Tot looks like she's controlling the clouds and the weather at this point. She has looked really, really strong. Sarah Hood making a ball change, and that's not the right one, 610. Yeah. It's, it's that I'm almost sort of wondering, and I guess I'll chat with Carl on this one is I'm wondering if that ball change is something that 
you wanted her to do or if she wanted to do it or not because she does not look really comfortable right now. She's just feeling it out a little bit at the moment. The left lane is a lot tighter. Uh, the right lane is pushing it out, so she's having to move a little bit further right than she feels comfortable at the moment. So she's making spares. She hasn't missed one in two games. The only open she's had is a split. So I think once it starts coming to her, I mean, Kelsey's throwing a great ball. It's a very tight line. Mm -hmm. uh, just going to see what happens. But so far, it's a great match. A great All right, this has been both 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 women throwing the ball very, 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 very solid. I mean, the lowest one, I think, so far is 203. Yeah. And, and that was a two-frame roll-off situation. So, so you got to think right now, I don't think this match will be ending anytime soon. That's just my personal opinion. No, I think it's, I mean, Kelsey's getting some real good streaks going at the moment. And I think right there, it's suiting the right. her ball speed and her ball shape. I think she's just got, she's matching up a little bit easier than what Sarah is. And, Again, Sarah's never played here before, so this is the first time for her, so I think she's doing well. Absolutely. Um, she bowled 761 this morning at UBA, so I think to try and do that again is after a drive down here and being a little bit tired. Plus, she's probably not eating, so she's getting cranky at some point. <laughs> you do not want to see a cr cranky bowler. Ever. Ever. Kelsey right now want, not wanting to be cranky, looking for front four, she gets it. Last game, front seven. This game, front four. Hmm. Actually, I'm sorry, front six last game. This game, front four. No, actually, no, I was right. Front, yeah, front seven. Front lot. Front, yeah, front lot. <laughs> front lot, 9-0 spare strike. So. so, yeah, front seven. Sarah right now is looking for strike number one this game. There it is. I love that more, actually, I've heard. That's... I like the ball rush effort. That's that's gonna be a lot better. I don't know. If, I know the two lanes play a little different here. Um, I've had a few. I've had some few experiences on this pair of lanes. Pretty good. Um, they play. I won't say drastically different, but there is a good difference between two lanes. With you know, like 42 being a little tighter on the back end on 42 than 41. In your opinion, what are what do you feel are keys to victory, especially in a in a long game, especially when you know you could potentially be going more than five games? He, uh, hold on. She's close by. Um, in in this, so if we're talking about this particular match here, here on four hundred and fifty. Especially being a champion yourself, you know, keys to victory. Uh, what is, what things you have to tell yourself in the, in your head? Well, first of all, when, when, one shot at a time, one game at a time. I, the biggest thing, and even Troy will tell you know, will tell me all the time. We treat every game, try and just go 1-0 each game, and then next game it's a, it's a new, you know, it's a new match. Just try and go 1-0, 1-0 every time each game, and then break it down to, you know, making a good shot every frame. Just focus it down, you know, basically break it down basic, more basic, more basic. Rules of kiss. Keep yes. it simple, silly. Yes, yep. exactly right. Basically right. I mean, right now, game two, Sarah, we thought that Sarah on the shot that was going to keep her a while. Shot, they basically disappeared game three. Disappeared game three. Kelsey has found it, and she's continuing to find it here in game four. Maybe she slowed the ball down a little bit. Maybe she's made the adjustment. Whatever it is, front four, looking for five here. Well, As we go into the second half of game four, is she going to do it? No, she's not. Ten pin. Well, well, a lot of times to avoid the feet, it all starts at the feet, and her yeah, feet definitely slowed down, and they got a lot more fluid. Kelsey had a shot to blow this one out of the water. She is not in this case. It's only a 30-pin game. I'm making the assumption, of course, that she's going to make the 10-pin. That is not exactly the best assumption in the universe with Kelsey because she's whiffed on a couple of them. And if she continues to, then this becomes, oh, interesting. Oh, so interesting. And right now, the, um, the wind beneath her wings, or this could be the... Um the, uh -oh. the, uh, the treacherous wind that blows down, Could be blows a tsunami. down the whole town. And oh no. And there's a tsunami. And she waves. That, she that's waves number goodbye. three, by the way. The number first three. one almost cost her game one. And the second one now went from blowing Sarah out to all of a sudden. Hold on one second. Sarah! Sarah! You're not up yet. I, I don't know what Sarah's physical uh, prowess is right now. Her her mental uh, fatigue may be setting in. Well, and I can say that because she's my teammate. And, and she's and she's been putting a lot, a lot of work today. Yep, she has put a lot oh. of work today. 
Kelsey has been putting in a lot of work also with the strike. However, that little blip in the fifth frame does open the door a little bit. It's now a 20 pin lead. And if Sarah can start stringing together, she can put some pressure on Kelsey to no longer be leaving 10 pins or to at least start making them. Yeah, definitely. She, um, she could put a lot of pressure on, especially if those 10 those ten pin debacles keep happening. And they're happening consistently. Consistency is the key, but it could be the keys that also don't work if you don't use them. <laughs> yeah, well, in this case, she didn't use it. She's got a 4-7 over there. Again, if you just joined us, we're in the middle of game four. Kelsey Hammond up 2-1 to one over Sarah Hood. Kelsey liking the strike, not liking the spare, and really not liking the 10 pin. No, she is not liking it at all. Not liking it. Sarah right now liking every form of the spare. The only problem is she's going to need more than that, unless there's a litany of 10 pins that show up for Kelsey. Yeah, she's definitely going to have to find something. She's going to have to search and dig deep. Well, still, only a 20 pin game at this point. And if Sarah makes this, it'll be 22 pin deficit that she has to deal with, four frames left. If, if nothing changes, then we could be seeing a 3-1 lead. That could be. Yeah, if you're, if you're Sarah Hood, you really want to grab this one and go up even 2-2. Two, two. You do not want to be down 3-1. Yeah. You know, quote somebody with three H's. It's all about the game and how you play it. And it's all about control and if you could take it. It's also all about controlling your destiny. Kelsey Hammond right now, very in control of her destiny. He's got a strike going in seventh. Sarah only with a spare. So another double from Kelsey in the seventh and eighth frame. And she can grab a very serious grip on game, on game four. Now, again, Sarah is so close at this point. She just needs a couple of strikes and some pin counts to go her way. And more importantly, some stringing. There's one. Yeah, it looked like there's a little effort energy there. We're saying, see, sometimes you got to say effort and just throw it better. Big shot for Kelsey coming up here in the eighth, in the seventh frame. A double puts her up by 30. A non strike puts her down potentially by 10. An open, and Sarah can take the lead. One open. And I'm telling you. All it you, takes. And I, I quoted Roddy Piper earlier just when you think you have all the answers, I start to change the questions. Let's see if pink count will change the question. Well, that ball's got to hurry up. And, oh, my goodness. Well, it's not a 10 pin, but it's not a strike. It is an 8 pin. It was an 8, and right now, she's got to be thinking, why me? Why is this happening to me? Nah, I don't, well, not even that at this point. I mean, you're still up by 22 pins, assuming that you're going to make the pins in the middle of a lane. So still nothing that much for Kelsey to worry about, even though if Sarah finds something in the 8th and ninth frame, that 20-pin lead will be under a 20-pin lead, maybe over a 10-pin lead. The math always changes when the strikes turn to spares. Absolutely. Sarah can go out the door for 235. Kelsey can go out the door for a 247. So again, you're looking at 20 pins. Eighth frame, very, very big frame for Kelsey, depending on what she does here. It all depends on here. Every, like I said, every frame counts, and anything can change in a matter of time. All you need sometimes is for the energy and then the wind in the room to shift. The an cold. open, and by the way, an open, mm -hmm. she loses uh, control of her destiny in this match. Strike here, she can't get locked down. 10 pin, and mm. oh, here we go again. Here we go again. The first 10 pin that she missed made it close and stopped her from blowing out Sarah. If this is 10 pin miss number two, Sarah can turn around and steal this one. Well, the ball because rolled an open, out. Yeah, well, an open puts, open the best Kelsey can do is a 226. And as I said, Sarah can go out for 235. Mm. Big spare right here. Happening right now, that ball looks a little better if it stays at will. Yeah, she put everything in that one. Kelsey's still in control of her own destiny. She can go out now for 236. So Kelsey right now theoretically is up by one if Sarah doubles in the eighth and ninth frame. For Sarah had to find something at this point, now would be the time. She can make this a one pin game. Yeah, she needs to get, get it going. Opportunity is there. You must carpe diem, must seize the moment. Eighth frame coming up. That ball looks better. It is. Two in a row for Sarah Hood. All of a sudden now, it's an 11-pin game. A strike here in the ninth frame. It is a one-pin game. Yes, she definitely um, minimized her window in that shot. She made sure that she kept it 
inside the oil, pushed it, got it down the lanes, and let the ball work. And Obviously, huge strike coming up here in the ninth frame, or huge frame coming up in the ninth frame. For a potential 235 finish, like yeah. you mentioned. They said, she hits this one pin game. Nine frame ball, there's a change, that ball looks good. Oh, and, and she tickle. gets the mix. Very and cool. all of a sudden, that missed nine pin in the fifth frame may be looming a little bit for Kelsey Hammond. But here we go, ninth frame, here's the situation. Kelsey strikes here, she'll still be up by one. She strikes out in the 10th, she will lock Sarah Hood out by one pin, she will take game four. Anything less than four strikes, and Sarah can either tie or win game four. Anything less would indeed Ninth frame. Here we be go. uncivilized Got the and... Well, it wow. didn't go well. Oh, wait go. a minute. Oh, my goodness. That is, in the words of Carl, that is a fantastic nine. And we got to make sure we change it to nine Yeah, up we got to change that from an eight to a nine. She clearly got nine on that. However, now it is Sarah that can strike out to take the game, and it is Kelsey that needs to put pressure on Sarah. First things first, got to hit the eight pin. And she will. I believe she's 100% yeah, on eight pins. Both fixes, what an amazing game this has been in game four. Yes. Both fixes right now, and again, now it is a nine pin lead going the other way. Sarah Hood up by nine going in the 10th frame. Kelsey goes out the door, it's a 225, that will force Sarah to throw the first two. If my math is correct, and it usually is. Yeah, potential 225 Yeah, 225, finish. Sarah's got to throw the first two. Because nine spare strike gives Sarah 224. Kelsey, first shot here, wants to put on as much pressure as Sarah as she can, mm. and she can't, 10 pin. Yeah, she missed inside and skidded a lot in the oil, didn't get necessary to get the flip through the pocket. Leaves the 10. Thankfully, the 8 fell. Well, this this forces Sarah to at least show up with a mark. Sarah's got a mark in the 10th frame. If Kelsey makes the spare here with any good with spare and strike, and Sarah's first ball has got to be a strike. Yeah, it's got to be. Because if she makes it well, and strikes, no. then no. No. If she makes it and strikes, then Sarah goes 9 spare strike. It's a tie. Yes. However, oh, she's oh, got to make oh, the 10 oh, pin, oh, oh, and oh, oh no. my goodness. So it's no longer she needs a strike. Sarah does, however, need a mark. So Kelsey can still win this one. Now, pressure's on Sarah. She, she strikes, she wins. She marks, she wins. She opens, she loses. Here's Sarah's ball. This is for game four. Tie the match up at two. She got it. Big strike from Sarah Hood, and we are tied two games apiece. Mm. Wow. Good thing I had my caffeine, because now I can stay up for this match. Yeah, now, now you can stay up all night on this. You know, one of the things that we both said, and I had this feeling, I thought that this game was going to last for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this game, best of seven is now turned oh, into a best of three. Right. Missing an eight pin. Uh, yeah, missing an eight pin. You got a re-rack. Not that it really matters. Sarah's already got this one mathematically. That being said, still got a re-rack. Still got to do it. We're getting here a potential Caffeine TV classic right now. You know what? Two in one day would be amazing. Um, again, shout out to Leah Maynor in a classic walk down. Coming down, coming back rather, from zero to three. The, very the first title defense as being the very first female cruiserweight champion of the Northeast. Title defense. Of, any, of, any, of any region. Now the one big difference though between this match and Leah's match is that no one's gonna have to come back down from zero to three because we're tied. Now the 10 pin shows up, which for Sarah is fine because she's already won the game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we no one's gotta come back from zero to three in this one. We're tied two apiece. Absolutely, we are tied to a piece, and right now you are getting the piece of a beautiful treat, and we are glad to break that off to the viewers here watching on a Saturday night. You could be out, you could be in costume, but why not when we're dressing you up right here with something beautiful? Talking about missed opportunities, and you've had them in this match. It could have been 4-0 either way, and it doesn't matter at this point. 
at the end of game four. And Sarah just said something that we will not say for Captain TV. Mm -hmm. At the yeah, end of game four, Sarah something. Hood, 223, Kelsey Hammond, 203. And we are tied two games apiece. <sighs> game number five. five. Right now, it is Kelsey that's going to start game five. Hammond again. Well, you look at it this way. If she makes her spare, she wins game four. But she did not. It all comes back to well, what yeah. haunts you. And in a spooky situation like that. I mean, the, the only game, really, where Miss Spears didn't hurt anybody was game three. Game one, we had a missed piece of wood that went to her off that eventually Sarah had lost. Game two, Kelsey uh, missed a spare that went across her. Game three, Kelsey won single-handedly. And then game four, Kelsey had two opens. Yeah, and again, those opens coming back to haunt. Um, and, she, and we're saying that, and still, both both Vixens are averaging way over 2 teen at this point. Oh, definitely Speaking of still. which, Kelsey, strong start, striking game five. Kelsey right now, very, very focused. Indeed, and I definitely understand why you're in your own head wondering, why can't I get the 10-pin? And after a while, you have to stop trying... <laughs> after a while, you have to stop thinking about why the 10 pin is not going and why I'm not hitting it. And you got to just let your arm flow three and exaggerate the lift and take that 10 pin out. Chatting with Kelsey very quickly here as Sarah leaves a 7 pin. Kelsey, game, game four, was this sort of how you thought this was going to go back and forth? No. <laughs> no, if I could make a 10 pin, it wouldn't have. But here we are. Well, you know, looking at it this way, one of the things that I just told Sean and I, both bullers have had opportunities here. And on one aspect, yes, two, two, you're frustrated. On the other aspect, you could be you could be down 3-1. So it's almost poetic justice 2-2 two, two at this point. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm going to want to be 3 You know how I want to be. Well, but I, I know what you want. I know what she wants. I've seen both of you both in action. For sure. It could be different for sure. For sure. So, so I was going to make the spare. Anyway, I'm going to let you focus and uh, get ready for game five. Good luck. Actually, so he started game five. She's got a strike up there on the board. Yep. And Kelsey starts off with a strike. And she's focused on trying to get the 10 pin out because right now the 10 pin is in her head. Anytime she sees it, it looks like it's a mile away. Well, you gotta, you gotta also look at it this way. You know, Kelsey could have been down 3 1. It tied 2 2. Obviously, Sarah could have been, this game could have been, I can't say this game would have been over if Sarah had control in game two, but it could have been 3 1 either way. At this point, it's 2 2, and these are what good matches are. Good, solid matches are ones where both bowlers have opportunities, and both bowlers are still bowling really well. Indeed. Yeah, I definitely know that, and they're bowling ex exceptionally well. This is a, a prime example of why our Vixens are one of the main parts of the spotlight. They have always shown amazing skill, amazing grace. And right now you're seeing what we're talking about right here. The 10 pin will go down for Sarah. So she'll be there. However, Kelsey, quick control here with a quick strike in the first frame. Double gives her the lead right back. Yeah, double does spell trouble earlier on. Uh, but even though doubles and the strikes are great, it's all about Gotta one make your thing. spares. The Gotta 10 make your spares. pin Gotta make in your spares. particular. Of course, you don't need to. Ooh, I thought that was going down. Wiggling 7 pin up there. Well, it's not a 10. It is not a 10 pin. But you can't, from a mindset, you know this. You can't be like, oh, it's only a 7 pin. It's still a corner pin, and you still got to focus on it. I'm sure she's happier to see a 7 pin than a 10 pin, but you still got to focus on it. You still got to focus on it. Because you could take it for granted and take it too lightly, and then you can go at it lightly. Yeah, she's not taking it for granted. That spell looks good. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't take it for granted. That was solid as a rock. Was well, Kelsey Hammond right now? We, we are technically tied. Sarah's got a little bit of an advantage with a strike. Mm -hmm. However, a strike from Kelsey almost negates that. Yep. Potential 290 for Sarah. Potential 280 for Kelsey. I will say this right now. I want game seven. I do not want this ending in six. I don't care who's up. I want to see game seven. I do not want to be deprived with only six games. I want to see seven. I, I couldn't agree anymore. Kelsey, right now, that ball looks good. A little high. Oh, Tempin's still there. And talk it up, and it shows back up, almost like saying um, Beetlejuice three times. Yeah, but at least at least this is a makeable spare. There's no seven pin to go along with it. And, and Kelsey, right now, I do not think, I know Sarah's left a couple of splits. 
but I don't think Kelsey has made as has left anything that was um, unforced. Basically, she didn't leave any splits. She didn't leave anything that was not unmakeable, if you understand my double negative. Her issue's been making the 10 pin. Now she makes it. Oh, she definitely made it. Definitely um, uh, you doing a little bit of what I mentioned, and um, maybe it clicked off in her head, too, that she just basically needs to get the arm all the way up. Sarah Hood right now still stroking that ball. Everything still seems fluid. Still seems like she's rolling at a beautiful natural speed. And it is the marathon and you have to keep going. And right now she's still going and look at the ball travel down the lane. Up is a 10 pin gonna, oh my goodness. Oh, lay down 10 slow. 10 pin went down, there is a double. And I was expecting to say 10 pin. I am not saying 10 pin, that went down. You know what's- Both just, Nixons here are getting some crazy mm. good carries here. Yes, or some would call it BS carry. What up, Miguel? Well, okay, uh, the, you know what? Yes, some people would call it BS carries. Shout out to Miguel Acobo. But all the pins go down, that's the important thing. Yes. Sarah Hood right now taking so, sort of an unfamiliar position to be in. It's the first time in three games that she's actually had an early lead. Fourth frame here, she's looking for three in a row. And she gets it. Sarah Hood right now with a quick 21 pin lead but as we have said and you know this this is going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth yes all right now kelsey's turn yeah alia esque going back back forth and forth and right now yes. she's kelsey got to be going back and forth needs to be on the correct head. lane oh there we go <laughs> yes i was about to yell kelsey you're on the wrong lane but she's there she's good kelsey trying out something a little different give her a different Some look Oh, that was a good shot there. Very nice shot from Hammond. Yeah, yeah a little the, more the cowbell crowd on firmly that. Behind, yeah, a little bit more cowbell, a little bit more tambourine. Crowd firmly behind Hammond right now, going into the second, second half of game five, going to fifth frame. For those of you that's just joined in, we are tied two games apiece here. Yeah, welcome, man. Welcome. Hey, you, sort of, you sort of missed nothing, but at the same time, you missed four fantastic games of bowling, including mm -hmm. a two-frame roll-off. You know, a whole lot of good bowling. I told you, we... You, you watch caffeine, we provide the dessert. Oh, absolutely, or at least a nice aperitif to go along with the Namus Boosh. Kelsey, very amused by that shot. Oh yeah, and right there, there still go. explosive. Kelsey's, Kelsey right now is the one closing the gap, and now it is Sarah that is being forced to throw strikes. Because if a strike is not there, depending on what it is, she, will, she may relinquish her lead. If she opens, she could very well relinquish her lead. Well, right now, Sarah up by 21 pins. Sarah Hood right now, that ball looks good. It's got to dig in a little bit, and the 10 pin goes down again. There you go, a little back tap. A little tap, Sarah right now, and four of those strikes, and again, I'm almost saying shades of what Kelsey did in game one. Kelsey, a couple light hits in her four bagger, but that was good. Over here, two strong shots, two shots where you had to beg a little bit for the 10 pin to go down, but it went down. However, still no farkles. I would say there's no begging in bowling, but we all bowl <laughs> and we all beg. I, I've gotten a message from somebody saying, gee, Gordon, I know why this is caffeine. You sound wired. That's a nice plug. Us commentators always like to be wired on caffeine TV. Uh, and we are live wired. Oh, live wired. So, Carl, what's going on over there? You're, you're jogging back and forth. The, the uh, re rack? Ball got stuck down the back, but then just okay. as I walk away, as usual, the ball comes back. Right. So I've got my step count up low, so that's good. Well, it's in Australia, not England, that the ball comes back and boomerangs back, right? A little bit. A little bit. I'm in the wrong country. Plus the water goes down the toilet the other way, which is really weird. That is really weird. What's not really weird is five in a row from, from Sarah Hood. Carl claps in approval. Now, for those of those saying Sarah is wired, we have seen this play happen before earlier, mm. where the front five sometimes no good. And if anybody can come back from this, it is Kelsey Hammond. Yeah, even though the hood is looking good right now, you can never count out Kelsey. Well, this is not a big, big lead here at all. Kelsey strikes here, it's still 21, and there it is. Three in a row from Kelsey Hammond. Kelsey right now still only down by 21 pins as we go into the seventh frame. Both Vixens on strings of strikes. Kelsey on three, Sarah on five. Well, if you want to make the alley a better place, sometimes you got to look in your bag and make a change. And she indeed made a change. I see what you did there. 
And I'm not going to ask you if you're okay. Kelsey right now wants to be okay. Four in a row, seven, that falls a little high. No matter, it goes down. Four in a row. Kelsey right now still only down 21 and still challenging Sarah to keep throwing strikes. Sarah right now can go 290, and she may need to go 290 because Kelsey can go out the door for 269. That's right, and 69 on Saturday could be the way to go. Saturday night makes it all right. And yes, if you don't understand some of these song lyrics, we're going back and forth with your old. Trying to make new here, six in a row. Yes, oh. that one's probably the best look in a while. Did not need this 10 pin to go down or any help. Well, you Sarah mentioned Hood old. Sarah still clinging to a 21 pin lead here as we go into the eighth frame. Yeah, you mentioned old, and one thing that's not getting old, watching beautiful shots. That is a beautiful shot going into the eighth frame. Again, clutch frame here for Sarah Hood and a very pivotal one. A strike she cannot get shut down going to ninth or 10th. If it is anything less than a nine count, she can be shut out, and Kelsey can come in and swoop in and take game three. Open here obviously would be disastrous at this point. Well, in order for her to swoop, she must continue to spread her wings and get the talons ready. Eighth frame coming up. Carl didn't like that one. She wants the ball to hook a lot, and that is not a strike. That's a 6-10. And again, more importantly, that is not a nine count. That is an eight count. Mm. So let's do the math here. Assuming that Sarah gets a strike, it is a 268. Kelsey can go out for a 269. Correct me on the math. Right now, this is a one pin game. And if Kelsey goes out the door, she takes game five. You are more than correct. Uh, I'll one... go back to Aaliyah, back and forth and forth and back. Or there you can cameo at this point. I mean, Let's bring cameo in. <laughs> you're I right. I like cameo. And you know what? <laughs> she needs to rock. She needs to make... Well, she has to rock the boat and make this pair. Or she's going to be writing a four page letter to her emotions. Yeah, she's got a. Yeah, she makes a spare. She was a little bit worried on that, no reason to. That ball's plastic, that's mm -hmm. not going anywhere. El Plastico to make sure the marginal uh, error is El Cheapo. Well, right right now, the margin of error is not only El Cheapo, it is one pin. Because mm. Kelsey, in the eighth frame, a strike here, and Kelsey takes the lead by one, going to ninth frame. Two pivotal shots here by Kelsey Hammond. Ball goes First up the shot lane. here. That ball looks good. It is Barry. Barry shot from Kelsey Hammond. Now pivotal shot in the ninth frame here. Again, I, it seems like I'm a broken record. If she strikes, she cannot get shut out. It does not matter what Sarah does. Anything that is not a strike, it is Sarah's turn to come in and steal this game. There you Obviously, go. if since this is still a one-pin game, if Kelsey does throw a strike here, Sarah can go out the door and force Kelsey to do the same. Well, we are not watching philanthropy. We are watching a tug at war. That is true. And let's see if the tug Ninth of war frame. continues. Here's a shot. That ball looks good. It is. And right now she's pulling Kelsey this game Kelsey cannot be shut out going into the 10th frame. She goes out. She will beat Sarah 269 or whatever. Again, it is now Sarah's turn to make life as hard as humanly possible. Well, right now, it's the first person to sneeze. First person to blink. Uh, and it's not a game. Ha ha. That was terrible. You go to your room and consider what you've done. I will go to the corner, but if you yeah, say go, corner go three corner. times, corner pins show up. Well, right now, Sarah does not need corner pins. Sarah needs a strike. And Sarah will get one. Now, mm -hmm. 10th frame coming up. Right now, still one pin game by Kelsey. Math first, game. Obviously, Sarah wants to go out the door. First strike is almost pivotal. Mm -hmm. or actually, not just pivotal. It is almost mandatory. Mm -hmm. Math. Yeah, because if she doesn't strike here, she's all she's doing is forcing Kelsey needed mark. And it doesn't look like, and I'm not, not wanting to use the KOD here, but it not, does not look like the way she's throwing her ball, her buddy's going to show up. Mm. Sarah Dud here, first ball. That ball looks good a lot better than what she did in the eighth frame, but she leaves oh. a tap in. Oh, a little Savion Gloverish situation, a tap, and not necessarily when she would like it. Sarah it looks a lot better on her 10 pins. Should not be a problem. So right now, at least that shot forces Kelsey to show up. Kelsey does need a mark here. Regardless, if Sarah, get my math again, if Sarah marks and strikes, first ball from Kelsey's got to be a strike. Nine spare strike would be, yet again, ha-ha, another tie. 
So that would be roll off number two. Roll in off one number match. two. However, Sarah does need to make this pair first before you can discuss it. She will. That ball's not going anywhere. Potential 248 finish for Sarah, assuming yep. that she strikes. Correct. Assuming that she strikes, so it's a big fill right here. So basically, Kelsey needs a strike. She assuming needs that all. she gets all 10. Nine, and assuming that Sarah gets a strike, nine spare strike is a tie. Anything less than that, and Sarah takes game five. Here we go this again. Is, this is the classic UBA games that you want here. Yeah. I mean, regardless of what happens, why I want a game seven. And this game is still very much in doubt. One, two, There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looking for a strike here, she gets it. All I, 10 pins went back. Sarah Hutt finishes 248. But again now, goes to Kelsey. Strike. Strike, she wins. Obviously, she will need good count in the fill. Strike, she will win. Nine pins, a potential tie. Anything less than that, Sarah wins. First ball here coming up. This is for game five with a strike. If she gets it, she does. That's Barry. Game and once again, five. as we have said, front five or five in the middle, the way the things of fixings are throwing the ball, it, front five, no good. Front seven, no good. Gives you mm -hmm. time to catch up. Yeah, front six, you're short. Yeah, front six, <laughs> no good. Oh, man. Shot here. Kelsey needs five. I'm going to assume that she's going to get it. Second shot here, definitely at least five. Good enough. Kelsey Hammond right now, so we're gonna finish the game. Eight in a row to finish out this game, potentially nine in a row coming into the 10th frame. And that shows all you have to do is, well, stay on track. It doesn't matter if someone's throwing a lot of strikes to begin. You just have to wait for that moment. Sometimes you have to be still, sit in the situation, and just grit your teeth. And Kelsey right now, this is just a fill. It doesn't matter. She'll strike anyway. At the end of game five, Kelsey Hammond, 269. Sarah, 248. What a match. Kelsey Hammond up three games to two. Well, if I can, if I can quote a certain... And Sarah's going to run and take a break. Yeah, if I can quote a certain wrestler who used to wear red and yellow, what oh, you going to do? Now, now, not only is he going to take a break, we're looking for a re-rack. What you going to so do? So he can't go anywhere. Nothing. What you going to do? Nothing. When the Vixens start throwing strikes yes. on you. So now, now we have a, we have an interlude. Hey, Kelsey, Kelsey, uh, we're gonna need a re-rock, please. Shout out to all of you, everybody, each and every viewer. Shout out right to everybody now. that's watching. I hope that you're as entertained in this matchup as we are because this is fun. Now, now I'm gonna come over and have a little chat. Kelsey says, "Hi, wait, come over here by a mic to say that." Hold on one second. Hold on, what? hold on, hold on. What? First of all, here, now you can say hi, Mom, because that's not going to catch. Hi, Mom. That's number one. Number two, you know that there is one person here that does not want to see a game seven right now, and I bet that's you. No, not really. I just want to get it done and over with. I got I to gotta drive home. <laughs> oh, we all do, but that, that shot's looking really good. What just did you make? between game four where you're getting frustrated and now where you just, let's see, finishing out with nine in a row. I will always say my mental game is like my biggest disadvantage to myself and anybody that knows me knows that. So I think with the help of other people and then like, hey, kids, come on, slow down, be calm, that helps. And then I think that uh, ball change definitely was like the right idea because I started out with a ball that I was like, it might look good, but it was not good, it wasn't. But yeah, just gotta stay calm, roll the ball, let it do its job. By the way, for those of you expecting this, and it's not ending because this match is not over yet. So I will let you go over there and prepare for the next game. Good luck. So game five in the books. Kelsey Hammond is up three to two. Now before, Sarah, I will let you go start game six and then, then we'll have a little chasky. So before, at the beginning, I said there'll be someone that definitely wants a game seven and someone that definitely does not. Sarah definitely wants a game seven. Oh, definitely. I mean, that, that was a great showing for both players. I think Sarah just got a little bit slow on the eighth shot there and he just read a little bit too early. But other than that, I think Sarah's had, if you ignore the one shot where she was testing, she's had four clean games. So oh, she has. Yeah, uh, and Kelsey just, she's, got the lanes tied up she's throwing great strikes she made a really good ball change there uh, again it's just 
Who wants it more at the moment? This has been a phenomenal match so far. Sarah Hood right now, first ball coming in. That ball looks a little late. Ten pin wiggles, doesn't fall. No Farkle. No Farkle. Now a Farkle, by the way, for those wondering what the heck that is. I am. That is the British version of the messenger. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's not the British version. Australian even though it's a British version. person that's saying it. No, it's from New England, so yeah. it was kind oh. of. So it's sort of England-ish, but not British. It's England with that of being Britain. The, the newer version. So yes, newer version. Chris Vialli is one of the main proprietors of this. So a farkle is when a messenger goes across the lane and it takes out either a 7-pin or a 10-pin. And you can have a variety of different farkles. So you can have a lazy farkle, a rolling farkle, a flying farkle, for example, is when the pin doesn't even hit the deck and takes out the 7 or the 10. A senior farkle for the over 50, so we don't feel uh, excluded on that one. Uh, my favourite is the tomahawk, when the pin spins around and the base of the pin smacks out the top of the other of the seven of the ten. We have not seen any farkles yet this evening. Not today, no. We did have quite a few on the tour stop this morning, or this afternoon, shall I say, but I think we might have a chance of one in this game. The way that both women are throwing the ball, I want to see a farkle. I really want to see a farkle. Let's see if Kelsey Hammond's going to give us a farkle. No, just a, no, we don't get a farkle, just a plain old strike. No, you, uh, you've got to try and hit them a little bit light, I think, because when you don't have the rev rate that some two-handers do, you, I think you're hitting them thin, make them spin, and just send that pin across the deck. All right. Well, thank you, Carl. I will let you get back to chatting with Sarah as we go into game six. For, uh, for those of you that have just been joining us here, uh, you're, you're missing one heck of a match. Rewind this. Go to Cafe TV and rewind this and watch this whole thing going on here. This is game six. Kelsey Hammond up three to two. Kelsey Hammond looking to go up in this match, in this game, and he did, and she does not. It's a uh, three six. Well, I just got entertained and educated at the same time. So now when here I at think the UBA, of, we wish to entertain the masses. <laughs> so now when I hear, and drinker and caffeine is good for brain stimulation, which is why you should always have a little caffeine TV when you're watching your match. Thoroughly stimulated over here. Now, anytime I think about WTF, I'll think about with the Farkle. That's right. What the Farkle? Or Whoopi the Farkle? Uh huh. Whoopi the Farkle. So right now, Kelsey Hammond with a spare to be in the 20 first frame. Starting a little early, Sarah Hood right now looking to strike. If she does that, we're tied. Yes, we. He doesn't do it. Kelsey takes it quickly. Ah. And this is a game that Sarah needs to have. I know you're a champion that likes to coin this race. Well, I like to coin the first part. He likes to coin the second part. But I'm going to coin all of it. For Sarah Hood, the margin of error is zero, a.k.a. El Cheapo. And she knows it as he throw the ball here in second frame. That ball looks buried. It is. Yeah, nothing cheap about that shot. Oh, no. That was a good shot here. Now, if she can double on 41, Sarah will take the lead. Yeah, sometimes you um, look through diamonds and you find cubic zirconiums. Well, that one right there, that was pure diamond right there. And well, it was right, cut very nice. Well, right now, she's looking for a carbon copy of oh. what she just did in the last frame. Oh, that was coal. You saw what I did there. Uh-huh. Coal world. Sarah Hood right now, frame three. Looking to tie, looking to tie this matchup. I'm looking to take the lead and not be tied going to the third frame. Here's the ball. Does she make an adjustment? She changes the speed. That ball's got a lot better hit. And they all go down. Yeah, right there. Not, uh, not much emotion from Sarah, but the pins are good here. Now, now let's chat with Sarah for a moment. No, I know at the beginning you said, I don't want a game seven. Yes, you do. I, yeah, I need a game seven now. I don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> So what did you do in that eighth frame that last game? In the eighth frame. That's the one that you left that spare and Kelsey took advantage of it. Um, I think uh, on lane 41, wasn't it? It just checked a bit and then went high. Um, I wasn't, re I, I hadn't seen anything that made me want to make a move. That was the shot that made me want to make the move. So I made the move for the 10th frame, but yeah, I just missed it. All right, I'll let you focus on the rest of the game. Good luck. Yeah, here we go. Sarah's taking a lead. It is only a 10-pin lead. And Kelsey, once again, can force pressure on Sarah Hood here with a double in the fourth frame. Kelsey, right now, that ball looks a little high to me, though. Oh, Ooh. she gets a trap. Maybe, was, maybe higher makes it flyer, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to think of higher mighty, yeah. Yeah, high, high hit, mighty carry. High hit, mighty carry. Sure enough, Kelsey is once again threatening. Last game she threatened, she succeeded to overtake Sarah. Let's see what happens now. Sarah Hood right now, frame four. 
I'll say this, you know what else is flying? The match. Mm. This is very fast paced. Indeed, fast and furious. Fast and furious. Sarah looking to make the, oh, oh my goodness, tickle. there it goes. She didn't like it. A little tickle the, me The carry. pins disagree, there's, there's light. Hitting them light. Watch them fight. Uh -huh. And watch them all fall down. Uh -huh. Sarah Hood still up by 10 as we go into the fifth frame. And again, this is a game Sarah must have. Must if have. If she does not win it, it is, the match is over. That's and right. And Kelsey, that much closer to getting back to the Vixen's title match. Can't stop, won't stop. And you need it all right now. And uh, neither Vixen looking to stopping right now. Both Vixens have a fantastic look. Fifth frame here, that ball looks good. It's curling in nicely, and all the pins go down again. Four in a row for Sarah Hood. Keep in mind, last game, she had six in a row, and that lack of seventh cost her. Mm -hmm. So once again, the question is, can Kelsey press again? Well, let me tell the, the viewers, especially the bowlers that are watching this, what you're seeing. You're seeing masterful, very masterful chess as opposed to checkers bowling, playing for the long game. And again, you're, if, you're, if you're holding a belt right now, you need to be very concerned by both women that are currently bowling right indeed. now. Indeed. Kelsey looking for three in a row, not this time, four pin. Ball was, was, I think in my mind, was a little bit high. She got away with it on lean 41, did not get away with it now. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're seeing, like I said, great contrast of styles. You're seeing different ways that bowler, these two bowlers, these two ladies get through each game. Kelsey, as you see, stays, keeps her head in it, grits, and she is what we like to call a grinder. Sarah is a worker right now. She is working the lanes and basically just like an orchestra with the oil. Well, you said it yourself. She was telling a story maybe in games three and game mm -hmm. four, and now all of a sudden that story is coming up to life here in game six when she really needed to. Yeah, real recognizes real. Uh, at one point, I was real good at, at doing that, and Sarah right now is showing you how you do it the right way. Right now, Kelsey is trying to send Sarah to the land of make-believe as we go into the second half of game six. Uh. Sarah Hood needs to win this game to force a game seven. Right now, she's up by 21. Kelsey would like to try to throw a strike here. People like, like what she did. Kelsey did, and she left the 6'10". Yes, you know, just like smiling faces can lie sometimes, sometimes can certain hits. And right there, that reaction was not the best one. And right now, may have to either find a new surface or go back to a previous surface. A lot of times, those dull surfaces can lie to you, just like, like I said, a smiling face. Well, okay, uh-oh, that ball's got, oh, just made the spare. How ironic that would have been if she made the 10 and I, then left the, it. I was, I was thinking the exact same thing that you were at that point. The one good thing for Kelsey, she's up 3-2. She can afford to lose this game. But you can know, I'm not she? saying that but she wants she? to. But can she really, though? Well. Do you want to see game seven if Sarah's lined in? That's the question. Oh, greedy viewer. You you want just, more, don't you? Just, well, just from, I well, first of all, I'm greedy. Second of all, just remember, Sarah shot a 761 earlier on today. Mm -hmm. you, if she gets in a 761 mode, and now it's all of a sudden game seven, you know, Kelsey's gonna be hoping for a change. Sarah's obviously not gonna be hoping for a change. Sarah lives at 10 for 10. So four in a row gone. Kelsey, with an opportunity to take advantage, does not. Six frame right now. Sarah will, assuming that she makes a lead, Sarah will be up by, assuming that she makes a spare, I will say. Sarah House will have the lead. Up by 22, four frames left to go. Again, 22 pin lead is not a bad lead, but it's not an overwhelming lead either, especially as we've seen Kelsey be able to strike it up at will. Yes, we definitely have. And we've seen her being able to turn it on. She knows how to turn the heat up whenever it seems like it's getting cold and the cold wind starts to blow. She definitely can adjust her thermostat. And let's see if the temperature is still good. It is for well, her Carl, spares. Carl has said, and, and he's not wrong here, since game two, Sarah's had four clean games. So now we're in the middle of another clean game over here in game six. If she continues to do that, the only way Kelsey is going to get back into this game is if she starts showing strikes. Indeed. Spares are no good. Waiting for Sarah to open as of right now has been no good. Sarah gave one gift in the first frame. It looks like Sarah doesn't want to give out any more gifts. Yeah. It's Halloween, not Christmas. Very, you know, very similar to a boxing match, you know, seeing a boxer who's good at throwing haymakers but having struggle with the jab. And Sarah's been jabbing, sticking, and moving. That, Sarah that one right now, that wasn't was a, a good, bit wasn't of a good shot. Well, it was not. Only leaves two. Probably should have left a lot more. Yeah, I think the ball kind of came out of her hand a little early on that. Yep. If she makes a spare, she'll still have a 20-pin lead. However, once again, Kelsey starts throwing strikes. That lead's going to vanish. 
And keep in mind this, if Kelsey wins this game, the match is over. Indeed. And then six will be it. But I know, just like I'm you. I'm I want a game seven. You want game seven. Caffeine you want TV more. wants a game seven. Don't you? Do you want to see game seven? Yeah, but it's gonna go right. It's, you know, it's gonna go to my thighs, man. It's too much. It's too much. It's never sweets. too much. Never too much sweets. Never too much caffeine. And she's got to worry about chopping, and she does not. No, no chopping. Sarah stays from that order. clean. However, Sarah has given the opening to Kelsey Hammond with the double to put a lot of pressure on Sarah Hood. Kelsey here, seventh frame, and it almost looks, it almost feels, and it's not yet, but it almost feels like the double that she needs to throw is now. Does not necessarily need it now boy it would start putting on some pressure Hammond right now seventh frame that ball is uh, high and oh, oh the four pin goes down taking a nose dive like Rick Flair there Woo. <laughs> however the Learn pivotal to love it the pivot it's nice to get the strike there the pivotal one is the eighth frame and and let's oh. put it this way yeah you missed it oh she missed uh oh it. missed an eight pin uh, we got a reset because they said missed the eight pin, which is probably one of the reasons why the four pin went down because it wasn't an eight pin to go block it. Kelsey goes, boo. Well, they called it immediately. Even though we were chatting about it, they called it. Everybody, yeah, people on both sides, both teams agreeing on the same thing. So you always like that when they're both like eight pin. Chivalry. Yeah, that, that is true. All right, replay. Well, once again, uh, Kelsey, however, in the same position. That does not change. Maybe we'll Two strikes puts in a lot of pressure on Sarah. Seven frame out. Here we go. That ball actually looks a little, well, this time the four pin doesn't go down, and there's a seven that goes along with it. However, I will say this. Seventh frame would have been nice. It is the eighth frame for Kelsey. If she needs a strike, that's the frame to do it in. Yes, I mean, yes. obviously, she would prefer to throw the strike here also in the seventh, but a frame is the one that you put in pressure to go strike and then a spare on lane 41. That's not good for her anyway. She'll make the spare. All over the spare. Four, seven, no problem. Yeah, now a frame going on. Eighth frame coming up. Kelsey Hammond right now down by 22. Strike here for her. Will give her a little bit of mojo here. Coming up, eighth frame. That ball's still a little bit high. Is she gonna get away with it? Yes, she does. Well, that Almost was... looks like it's a speed thing. Yeah, a little tib there. A little bit of throw it better. A little bit of throw it better. Now, Kelsey goes out the door for 235. Uh, Sarah can go out the door for a 257. However, just like I said earlier on Kelsey, Sarah will need a double somewhere along the line to prevent Kelsey from catching her, I believe. Six, eight, ten, yeah, that's correct. All right, if Sarah goes Dutch, it's 227. Carl doesn't like that shot. Sarah leaves a 10 pin. Mm. Not the worst thing in the world. So currently still has the lead, but like you said, Dutch Well, spares not do not it. beat strikes, no, number one. Not. Number two, 10 pins have not been the friend to Kelsey Hammond. Let's mm -hmm. see if they're the friend to Sarah Hood. Well, it's been all good in the hood when, uh, in terms of spares. Well, so let's even, see. If, even if she opens, 275. Now, here's the interesting thing. If she opens and they both go out the door, it's a tie. I feel like you said that before. I, well, I, I, yeah, I said that a couple of games ago. Yeah. I'm going to say it again now. You're going to keep saying it, huh? Sarah wants to retain the lead. She needs to make the spare. She does. Now, ninth frame is big. A strike here, and she guarantees her. she's got fate in her own hands a spare, a nine spare, and Kelsey goes out the door, Sarah's got to strike out in the 10th to force a tie. Anything less than a nine or an open, Kelsey can go out and it's game, set, match. What if we have an alpha and omega style match where it started game one with a roll off and it ends in game seven in a roll off? Well, we got to get to game seven first, and for that to happen, Sarah's got to throw a strike for a nine here. And oh, hey, the seven pin goes down. A little down. ham and carry there. A Are little you kidding top, me? Top over. What the heck is going on with time delay on the corner pins and on the four? Well, we, well we are, we're we the pioneers of, of pins buffering, apparently. <laughs> apparently. So Sarah still needs a double. 
But if Kelsey goes out the door, Sarah's first shot in the 10th frame must be a strike. Strike nine spare would be a tie. That being said, Kelsey's got to do her for her part of the bargain here, ninth frame. That ball looks good, it is. Big shot from Kelsey going to 10th frame. Happen right now. Now the deficit is 11 as we go in the 10th frame. Mm. Chop it down one shot at a time. Well, if Kelsey goes out the door, Sarah's first shot's got to be a strike. Yes. This is, Kelsey uh, goes out, it's a 235. So once again, at least that first ball, Kelsey's got to have it. Yeah, this is what you call puncher versus boxer. Yeah. If she, if she doesn't get it based on count, Sarah only needs a mark or she doesn't need a mark. First ball coming up needs a strike. Gets it. That means Sarah's got to show up in the 10th frame. Now the question is, what variety does Sarah need to show up in the 10th frame? Recomposing herself is Kelsey well, That's Hammond. a big shot right here. Definitely needs to recompose herself. I'm automatically looking at that eight pin on 42, by the way. That eight pin is there. Okay, yes. <laughs> it has gone ghost a couple of times. As out, block. Recollects, resets. Well, last time she did that, she threw a strike. So she knows what she's doing. Kelsey Hammond's up right now, 10th frame. That was right now, second ball. That ball looks good, too. There it is. Going up high, and I mean very high, has helped her out. Now, again, pin count incredibly important here. Yeah. Yeah, that one right there behind goes, the head. Pitch. She, she goes, out the 7 10. If she goes out the door, Sarah's got to throw the first two. Strike nine spare tie. Again, so a count here would be very, 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 very important. Mm -hmm. To force Sarah to throw two, Kelsey's got to get this one. Potential 235 finish yep. right here for Kelsey Hammond, former Vixens champion. That Here's looks a third good shot. off the hand. Sure does. Sure is. Here's what the deal is. Kelsey goes out for 235. Sarah must get the first shot here. If she gets the first two, we have a game seven. If she gets the first strike, and a nine spare is a tie. Anything less than that, this match is over. Kelsey Hammond wins 42. Well, like I said before, punchers punch and boxers box. See Kelsey's what we have been here. throwing punches, swinging. Sarah big. headed very quick to the line. Let's see if the boxer can come back and finish this game. Go. First ball, got to have it. She oh. does. Light mixer is good. Now, Sarah's got a little bit of wiggle room, not a lot. A little bit of wiggle room here. If she strikes, she wins. If it is a nine count and she makes it, it is a tie and we get another roll off. Anything less than that, the match is over. Kelsey Hammond wins 42. Sarah Hood right here being the consummate professional, understanding that she controls the situation. She's not letting the situation control her. Correct and correct. Second shot here, strike forces game seven. Oh, Seven count no. and the match is over. Congratulations to Kelsey Hammond. She's going to win four games to two. Unfortunately. Wow, what a match. Unfortunately, caught a pool full of oil at the wrong time, right there in the middle. M miscalculated that one shot. Boxers rarely make mistakes, especially in this sweet science, but sometimes you can make one, and when you made one, it could be at the wrong time. Nothing, taking nothing away from Sarah Hood's oh, performance here. Oh, taking nothing away from anything. This this was one heck of a match. Sarah's going to make the spare. Yes, she will. At the end wow. of game six, and what a match this was. Kelsey Hammond, 235. Sarah Hood, 233. Kelsey Hammond's going to win this four games to two. And I'm going to have a little chat ski with it, with the victor. That, as I like to, as I like to turn both of you around here, that was one heck of a match. Kelsey, congratulations. Thank, thank you, thank you. <sighs> so, yeah, exactly. Who saw? Went back and forth, grind, 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 grind. One of the things that you have done, specifically in a number of these games, and two of them that you came back to win, you grinded at the end through a lot of strikes, especially when it counted at the end of games. How much of that has been experienced with you in the WCS? 
hold on. <laughs> what do you ask the question again? <laughs> You, you've been able to throw a lot of strikes at the end. How much of that is based on experience? Um, I would, uh, yeah, it could be based on experience. I also don't always know how to do the math in my head, so I'm just like strike out, make it, make it a battle at least. So I might not always want to do the math in my head real quick to see what I need, but a strike at the end at least gives pressure. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Sorry, I don't do math very well. No, no, anyway, congr congratulations again. I know everybody wants to get out of here and it's late. So uh, any final words? You can say hi, Mom, again, because I know that you want to. Well, any, any final words from you? Uh, thank you again to, I mean, all these lovely people that are here for me. I, I, I didn't ask them to be here. They said they were willing to come here, and it's, it's so great, especially because you, you get support from people that you really wouldn't expect to get support from. So I love it. I love it. I the support helps me three times better because I, I feed off that. Um, again, thank you to my suspects. Uh, thank you to Chuck Wallace for bringing me into the UVA. Um, Sarah's a hell of a good bowler. I would love to bowl with her any day. She, I mean, that was a match. That was a match. Well, she I, was I, a hell of a I want to ask both of you one question momentarily, but Sarah, how'd you enjoy this? Oh, I, I loved it. Like, my heart was racing through the first two games and just trying to, like, calm myself down was a mission. Um, then I kind of got into my groove and I felt a bit more like I was at home. But uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, this was, and I hope that both of you hear this replay. This was one fun match. A commentator.